back and forth, and the teams always perform. It's always a close game. Hopefully not tonight, but it's just great, great matchup when these two teams come together. We're going to step away for the first time on our pregame show. We come back with we'll a conversation with Royals head coach Eric Quintana, Dan's keys to the game as well. Stay with us. You're listening to Ron Kyle Royals football. It's the Royals, ranked second in Class 4A. Biff Chittard, ranked number one in Class 3A. And it's live on the Ron Colley Media Network. Is how we really shape our practice, uh, shape our games. So th those guys have bought all the way in. Um, I know uh, Rock Hard defense has been uh, traditionally strong in the past, uh, but we got a special group, and I don't see us letting down. We got some guys that are um, just getting better every day, and you see it in practice, and it helps going against you know an experienced offense, and especially an experienced offensive line, and so. They're getting, they're getting great work in every day, and it shows on Friday. So I'm extremely proud of them. What did you learn about your offense in terms of a perseverance standpoint, kind of being deadlocked in that first half and being able to rise above it and push through it in the second half? Yeah, it was, yeah, it, it was great. You know, after watching the film like a little more in-depth on late Friday night, Saturday morning with the guys, it, it was just one or two small little things that um, we didn't jump on the adjustment until halftime. If, it, I'm, I don't want to sound overly confident, but if we if we make the adjustment um, right after the first series um, with what we were doing, um, I, I truly believe the ball game is is a different situation in the first half. Um, once we made the adjustment, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I know we we ran the football fairly well in the second half, um, and, and they didn't do anything different. They loaded the box and manned us up on the outside, and so. Um, 
if we make those just those one or two small adjustments early on, the game is in a different place. But you know, there's a lot of good that came out of that offensively. We uh, we as coaches grew um, on Sunday into the weekend, um, and you know, and, and we know where we especially got to get better. We got to get better everywhere, but we got to get better throwing the football. We know in order to win big football games, we got to be efficient in the passing game. And I think this week we're going to see a huge jump in that. Um, obviously, we we got a good group up front. I've never hid away from the fact that we're going to run the football, but um, we, we've made strides this week. I was just talking with Dave Burton, our basketball game coordinator, about this week, and, and we're extremely happy with Eric Moyers, especially his progression and our receivers um, taking a giant step forward this week. So I'm excited to see them compete on Friday. The schedule, even though it's coincidental, appears to be ramping up in competition week by week. You're drawing a, a tougher foe, so to speak. What challenges does the number one ranked team in Class 3A in the Trojans present to you tonight? Yeah, you know, uh, offensively, uh, Coach Rob Doyle does a great job with those guys. Um, they got a great scheme. They are coached extremely well um, in the passing game. Rob is a top-notch mind. Um, when he puts those weekly preparations for if you're deficient somewhere, he will find it. Um, so, you know, just, just getting better uh, on our end of just doing what we do and getting really good at it will give those guys a lot of issues. Um, uh, we're, uh, you know, off- offensively, I think this is from now on, we're going to get a team's best um, inside the box. Um, we're going to get a lot of cover one, cover zero. So just progressing that and just getting better on that phase, in which we did this week. Um, you know, th- those guys are going to play extremely hard. Um, they're going to be well coached. Um, they're not going to make any mistakes. So that's the, that's where the game lies. Um, whoever's the toughest team on Friday and makes less mistakes is going to win the football game. Last question for you, Coach. I know that Shatard has a special place in your heart. You and Coach Doyle kind of coming up together there. Uh, I understand it in a sense it is just another game, but your first game against them since your departure – uh, what's this matchup mean to you, and, and what's it what's it like to be on the other side of this historic rivalry between these two programs? Yeah, that's that's a great question. You know, and and, and not just you know a set aside for me being there, but the Ron Colley and uh, Shatard rivalry is is a big deal. I mean, it, it it generates you know it starts when these boys are in third grade. Right. Um, they they compete against each other in CYO football from third grade on. Um, and, and you see it. You see it every week. No matter no matter who's up or who's down and who's good and who's bad, the game is always gridlocked. Um, you're going to get the best effort from each team. So um, I, I'm excited to, to see it on the other end, the south side end. Our, our group is pretty special, I still think. Uh, I got a lot of respect for those guys at Chittard. Um, you know, the, the, those, those seniors especially have taught and coached them for their, their whole career pretty much. So um, to sit here and say it's just another game, uh, I, I would lie a little bit. You know that my daughter's a freshman there, so Shatard has, has a special place in my heart. But um, I'm fully in with Ron Colley football, um, and, and, and we're good. And our goal, like we stated from from week one to when we first talked together, you and I, um, we want to win a state title. And, and in that, we have to get better each week, and we need to win each week. So um, that's where my mind is. Um, we're going to go out there. Uh, we're going to be the most physical team on the field. Um, I promise you that. We're going to be the most conditioned. We're going to make the less mistakes, and that's where the keys we talked about earlier. We're going to go out there, and we're going to play hard, and, 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 and we're going to do our thing. So I'm, I'm excited just for Friday, just for the for the boys. So I'm excited for our boys to go out there and, and play, play the greatest game that was ever invented and get another week to get better. So just my, my excitement just for those guys are on, on, on number 10. So I'm, I'm ready to go. It's going to be a fun one. Can't wait to see it all play out. Coach, best of luck tonight. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. That's Royals head coach Eric Quintana. When we come back, we'll have Dan's keys to the game and kick between Ron Colley and Chittard. If you're listening to Ron Colley Royals football on the Ron Colley Media Network. and Greenwood Florist. Our mission is to establish and maintain the highest level of floral value and customer service at comfortable consumer prices. For the best and freshest flowers in Indianapolis and surrounding... 
teacher. It was my scientific demonstrations that kept so many students after school. Most will say it was the electric ignition for cars that was my greatest contribution. <laughs> but my wife would argue it was the invention of Freon refrigerant for air conditioning. I'm a pioneer, and my name is Charles Kettering. Find your calling at Marion University's New Witcher School of Engineering. And even mobile solutions. They are dedicating the... This is your IHSAA. This is your state. This is your high school. This is your athletic association. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and we're here to make sure that all of this remains yours. This is your state. This is your community. This is your IHSAA. Born ranked top of the class in class 3a as captains meet in center of the field for the coin toss we welcome in the third member of our broadcast team dan lauk dan your thoughts overall on on tonight and just the rivalry as a whole between these two great programs yeah i mean it's a it's a game where it's really you're looking yourself in the mirror right i mean there's not much different between these two programs when you look at state championships tradition you know, the players on the sidelines have had brothers, fathers, uncles, cousins, etc. play before them. So that's what makes it really fun is you're playing against kids like Coach Quintana said you've been playing against since third grade. Um, you know, you never know what to expect in this game except that it's going to be hard fought, and I expect that tonight. Shift over now to the other Dan in our Dan squared combo, the great Dan Bauer for Dan's keys to the game. Dan. Well, that's, you know, defensively, I think I think the key to tonight's game goes defensively on either side of the ball. Uh, you know, Ron Colley obviously has played very well defensively on the first two games against Southport and Franklin Central. Tonight's going to be a big test. They've got a big quarterback. shatard has got a big quarterback, uh, throws the ball really well. I think it's going to put a test on the DBs. Ron Colley needs to stay aggressive and play fast uh, and not give up the big plays. Offensively, uh, you know, Ron Colley's got a huge size advantage. Uh, to me, uh, you know, as a pass lineman, you, you look at your matchup advantage there and you say, okay, big boys, win this game for us. Uh, and, oh, by the way, you get the best running back in the state, you know, carrying the ball behind your block. So, uh, you know, let's do that. But Ron Colley needs to keep working on that passing game, make that at least a threat to help relieve some of the, uh, the pressure on the running game. Uh, and then you, anytime these two teams get together, you have to play mistake-free football. Uh, penalties really hurt you in this game typically. Uh, and – you know, it's one of those things where you've got to, you know, it's a, it, you know, it's one of those games where everybody's talking about it. It's a rivalry game. You have to keep your head from the, the moment the whistle, the ball's kicked off to the end of the game and, and don't let your emotions get too high or too low to where it affects performance. Chittard leads the all-time series 37 to 25, but at Ron Colley, they're deadlocked at 16 apiece. Ron Colley's won the last two consecutive, that coming last year in regular season and sectional play. Of course, Chittard sent down with the success factor protocols back down to Class 3A, so no sectional matchup possible this year. Ron Colley has won the toss, and they've chosen to defer. They'll receive the ball in the second half, so Chittard back to receive the kick in yet another chapter in this historic rivalry, a rivalry that dates back all the way to the inaugural season of Ron Colley football back in 1969. Levi Whistler set to boot it away. Sam Feeney back to receive alongside Noah Dudik for Chittard. Whirls in the red unis, Chittard in the white unis. Kick is a nice end over ender that will go out of bounds for a touchback. Already a little bit of chippiness in special teams on both sides, as you would expect. And Whistler, when he goes up, you know, you see guys take a big 12-yard run up to the ball. He takes like he's kicking a field goal. Two steps and boots it into the end zone. Super strong leg. Oh, it's insane. We talk about it whenever he's 
there for kickoff or whenever he is on for punting duties on the instances Ron Cowley's had to do that this year. Take a look for the first time at the Chittard offense. Live at first and 10 from the 20 after the touchback. Drew Van Vliet, 22 of 27. Five touchdowns, two interceptions, and 81% completion percentage on the season for him. He's got three wide receivers to the right, none to the left. A running back on his right hip, that's Riley Kinnett, averaging about 4.6 yards a carry. First and 10, play action. It's a screen to the far left side, caught at the 20. Now the 25-30, 35-40, staying on his feet. No, he stepped out of bounds. Didn't know a Dudek, but it'll be enough to move the chains. Quick little screen action after the play action. Caught the Royals napping a bit. Big gainer to move the chains for Chittard. Called a gain of 16. Aiden Duncan did a great job on the corner. They're really blocking and tied up the corner. Uh, safety came up to make the play. It looked like Brian Kelly had it contained, missed the tackle, uh, and he was able to scatter down the uh, sidelines there for a nice pickup for the first, first down. First and 10 from the Trojans, 36. Three wide receivers to the left, none to the right. Van Fleet in the gun. High snap. He'll keep it himself. Finds a hole initially. Thought he was going to be wrapped up for a sack. He'll turn what would have been a one-yard loss into a three-yard gain. Van Fleet's a big quarterback, six foot five, 190 pounds. He's a senior. He's a transfer from Richmond. Uh, really did well for Richmond. He's got some, you know, comes in. He played a little bit last year. Uh, they had St. John that was kind of the starter and, and, yep. and a little bit more athletic. Uh, but uh, this kid's like, you know, yep. Big Ten looking quarterback for sure. his height, and uh, and he throws a ball that's tight spiral. Uh, and he was throwing it a, a good 40, 50 yards with control uh, in warmups. The senior has a conversation at the line. Has two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. It's a gain of three on the scramble. Second and seven from the Trojans' 39-yard line. Start 2-0 coming into this one. Victory is against Burbuff at Lucas Oil Stadium to open the season and a beatdown of Arsenal Tech, 48-8. to two. Just, I don't know what they were waiting on. They just now wound the clock. I'm unsure as well. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. It's a screen to the left side. It's caught by Kennett to the 40. Makes a man miss and is finally brought down after a gain of three. Be third and short. Opportunity for the Royals make a stance defensively. The Trojans 5 for 15 on third down on the year. Royals defense allowing opponents just to go 2 of 22 from third down this season. 11% for those of you keeping track at home. 11-15 left in this first quarter. Third and four for the Trojans on their own 42-yard line. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Van Vliet has Kinnett to his right hip. Takes the snap. Play action. He swallowed up and God sacked. Damn. Give the sack to Luke Schwartz. He was our player of the game a week ago. And leaving his fingerprints on this one right out of the gate for the sack. He did a good job. Trevor Luck actually took him from the outside, yeah. caused the quarterback to step up, and then uh, Luke just dropped him. So really nice job on the on the uh, the interior of that defensive line. Again, just doing a great job of getting up the field and, and collapsing that pocket. Uh, you know, because Chittard's, you know, obviously in their first couple plays there, they want to get the ball to the edges. they got a little smaller team. They want to get out in a space and try to make plays. So it's fourth and seven now from Chittard's 39, punting unit on the field. Andrew Ball stands at the Royals' 25-yard line. High punt to the right side. It's taken at the 15 by Ball to the left side, and he's going to be swallowed up. Great coverage there by the Trojans. So will operate shop at the 20, and that's where we see the Royals' offense for the first time tonight. Ron Cowley averaging about 31 points per game. Again, extremely small sample size so far at this point in the season, just two games in. But they're doing it primarily on the ground, just under 300 yards per game. Haven't really had to utilize the passing game as much. 41 yards through the air this season for the Royals. On the Chittard side of things, they're giving up just 204 yards per game and a key stat Kind of unstoppable force, immovable object to note around here, Dan. Shatar only given up 65 yards to the ground. Again, that's against Burbuff, who's solid competition, yeah. and against Arsenal Tech, who maybe not so much. So 6A, we'll call football. him 6A. Sure. But sure. it's not Ron Colley. Yes. And, and yes, Ron Colley is uh, gaining a lot more yards on the ground, so that's where the, the it's not Luke Hansen. is. No, and, and Luke Hansen should. Uh, and it's not Ron Colley's line. I mean, you've Correct. got Trevor Lauk, Brady yep. New, Luke Scartweet. Jackson McNeely and Luke Billerman that are going to be a, 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 a movable object up front that if they get their, their bodies in place and start moving, it, it get, creates a lot of space for Hanson. Royals will have it first and 10 from the 22. Another Marking little bit of delay here. or stoppage. And they called a five-yard penalty on something. 
never saw the laundry hit the turf, but you are right. They are moving the football back. And I didn't see a signal either. They kind of quietly did Unless it, it was a, a missed spot that's marked because the chains have moved now too. Oh, it is? Okay, it's a sideline interference penalty called against the Royals. Okay, there it is. You're the experienced vet here. Isn't there usually a warning thrown out there? Uh, there he is. That's, yeah, I'd love to hear the explanation yeah. of that one. Oh, they, they called a warning on the first play, apparently, says our stat crew. Hand off to Hanson, and he's swallowed up. Was that, you know, I think that was because of where they huddled out and they just kind of waited and Could delayed? Be. I don't know. That's, Could that's be. weird. Um, that's okay. But correct me if I'm wrong, but the way the chains are set up, it's second and – so it just, it just moved them back. It, it didn't just, impact the – down. okay. Yeah, all right. Yes. There we go. It, so it just, was a dead ball just, foul yes. that they move it and then set the so, chains. So gain of two on the run. It's second and eight from the Royals' 19-yard line with 9.43 to go in this first quarter. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Man in motion is Elsner. Moyers takes the snap. Pressure coming. Throws in the flat. And it's wrapped up. Hanson makes the catch. But he's pressured immediately out of the gate by Scott Semler. And it'll bring up third down for the Royals. Yeah, Scott made a really nice tackle out in space there. It's one of those plays, again, both teams are trying to get the ball out to their corners. You just tried to get the ball with enough green space between the, 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 the person with the ball and the defender, hoping you can kind of make a move. If you can get by that first guy, then it opens up space and you can get some, some easy yardage outside. Uh, and, again, what they're doing is they're trying to set up their run. Yep. Get the defense to know that, they, hey, I'm, we might go outside, force them to, to protect the corners so then there's, a, there's space. It's in a the loss middle. of three, third and 11. Moyers takes the snap, has a clean pocket, steps up, and now he's going to try to run with it, and it'll be brought down from behind. Well, we've talked about it a couple times, Dan, as there's a sack by the Trojans. Mobility with that knee brace, it's not a part of Moyers' game, but it was good coverage downfield, not really a lot of options for him to go with there. Nope, they had a great defensive scheme going on, and, and there was no nobody open, so uh, Moyers did a good job, stepped up in the pocket, kept his eyes down the field, so he wasn't, you know, he would rather pass it than run it, but there was clearly no options. He tried to sneak to the outside, and Chittard, as usual, did a great job of uh, pursuing and closing down any lines. Well, we expected defense to be a major part of this game, and so far, a drive on either side, that's been true. Uh -oh, high high snap. snap to Whistler. He's going to try to get this punt away, and he does. All things considered, that might take a Royals bounce. It will. Very fortuitous for Levi Whistler. He took that from the inside the end zone. He got it all the way to about the 35-yard line. And just speaks to the leg we talked about earlier of Levi Whistler. So that'll... And that was At least with, make it tough on Chittard. To with start three this guys yep. that looked like they could have blocked yep. that thing. They were all up close, and he somehow got that off. They didn't have a full leg swing. And, yeah, he's got a powerful leg. So both teams forced to punt their opening drive. 7.58 left to go in this first quarter. We're still scoreless. Chittard will have it first and 10 from their own 36-yard line. Van Vliet in the gun. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Four down linemen for the Royals. Van Vliet takes the snap. Handoff is to Kennett. Up the middle, and he'll fall forward for a gain of about a yard, perhaps two. Royals will welcome the battle up front all day long. They're proud of their boys in the trenches on either side of the ball. Second and eight, they'll call it, from the Trojans, 38. When I've mentioned the size advantage here, Ron Colli or uh, Chittard's offensive line goes hey, weight-wise, 217. There is a 296-pounder in there at 6'5", but then 210, 217, and 186. Uh, you know, so again, much smaller than what Ron Kai's been seeing in Southport and uh, Franklin Central. Now those they're much higher, uh, you know, in the five, you know, the five A and the six A class. Both of them are in six A actually classes. Second and eight. Nobody in the backfield. Pressure coming. Van Vliet swallowed up, and he is sacked by the Royals. But we might get uh -oh. a face mask yep. late. Yep. Let's see. You saw hands start to go up a little bit. The flag came out, and that is what it's going to be, I believe. Yeah. And that's tough because it, you just have so much traffic up there. You want to make sure you bring him down, Dan. You had three Royals swarm the scene. Let's see if the official call. Personal foul at his face mask yeah. on Ron Colley. Yeah, I wasn't sure who they were going to give the sack to. There were so many Ron right. Colley guys back right. there. But obviously now you don't have to worry about it because the stat goes to nobody because uh, it's wiped away yep. by that penalty. So unfortunate for the Royals. It is a – No, it's, it'll only be second down because it's yeah, not spot, an automatic not, right, first down. Right. So be second. Oh, well, they were back about what six yeah. yards from the thing, so it's going to put it at a second and yep. one or so. So call it second and one from the Trojan zone, forty-five. Two wide receivers to the left. 
two to the right for Van Vliet and the Trojans. Whoa. My movement in the trenches might have an early jump by the Royals. Give it to him anyway. It will be movement by Ron Colley. I believe it was Matthew Stacy. Correction. It's either Stacy or, or Turner. Yeah, honestly, I didn't see Correction on that. Nathan Turner, I believe, is who that was on. So that'll move the chains. First and 10 now, right at midfield for the Trojans. Two wide receivers to the left, one in the slot and one on the far right side. Van Fleet has Kennett to his right. Takes the snap, looks, fires, deep downfield, takes a shot. It's caught on the sideline, but was he in bounds? Let's oh. wait and see. They'll say he was in bounds, got a foot on right. the far sideline. Oh, yeah, okay. Looked like with the hit. He, he tried to force him out. Bounds. I thought so too. Yeah, I thought it was a great yep. play by the because he was open down there, but he went up to get the ball. I thought the DB did a great job of kind of trying to push him out of bounds. Noah Dudik makes the catch. It'll be first and ten for the Trojans at the Royals' 24-yard line, just outside the red zone. It shows Van Vliet can really put the yep. ball where he's yep. the money. I mean, he's a really good quarterback. Two wide receivers to the right, two to the left. Royals show some pressure. A little quick RPO action to the left side. It's caught, but swallowed up nice on the tackle. second effort. Tackle made by Nolan Tunney. So it'll be about no gain on the play, second and ten. Well read by the Royals. Well, Duncan did a good job of avoiding that first tackle. Like it's like getting in space and then avoiding that first tackle. He did it by coming inside of it. The only thing he didn't realize was Tunney was coming from yep. the middle linebacker yep. spot, and he wants him to come inside because right. then he cleaned it up. Two wide receivers to the right, two to the left for Chittard. Second and ten from the Royals' 24-yard line. Royals defense looking for a big stop. Kennett to the right of Van Fleet. Now he'll go out in motion to the right. Van Fleet looks that way. Now fires far end zone. Has Dudik. Broken up and picked oh, off. Yes. Picked off and intercepted by George Martin in coverage. What a swing by the Ron Cowley defense. And Martin just did a great job, A, running with the receiver, did not get sucked up by the motion and the, and the short pass, ran in stride with him, let them get a little bit of separation, but then closed it as the ball came in, get his eyes on the ball. He had one hand up just to knock it away. It happened to knock, uh, just kind of sit off of his arm, and easy interception really, or at least he made it look easy because right. a great just technical play uh, on that corner right there. Well, they talk about it all the time, particularly at this age level, trying to teach and instill fundamentals of turning around, looking at the ball, not worrying about the receiver as much as ball placement, trying not to get called for P.I. That was never in question at all in that oh, play. It was just a great play, perfect like play. you mentioned, by Martin. Yep. Uh, that's, uh, you don't see that kind of play no. at the next level. Yep. I mean, that yep. is fantastic defensive back play, cornerback play. The, just everything everything about it. You, you take, put that on tape and teach off of that. One First right and ten from the 20 after the touchback. A wide receiver on either side for Moyers. Hands off to Hanson. Up the middle, drag some Trojan would-be tacklers about five yards. Second and six, we'll call it. It's a four-yard gain out to the 24. Saw a lot a week ago, Ron Cowley trying to win the battle in the trenches with Franklin Central didn't really break it open until the first or the second half rather promising start at least on that play second and six man in motion it's a handoff instead to Hanson breaks the tackle initially at the line of scrimmage keeps the legs churning fighting forward for a gain of three perhaps four yeah, looks like they might measure it or they're going to give it to him yep they gave it to him first down well, after all the extra turning of the legs, it's a pickup of six instead for Hanson. And as Dan mentions, it moves the chain. So first and ten for the Royals from their own 30 with 5-10 to go in this first quarter. One wide receiver to the far right side, one to the left. Hanson to the right hip of Moyers. Moyers takes the snap, gives the Hanson to the left side, trying to find a hole. He's got one in 35, 40, 45, 50, before he's finally forced out of bounds. They'll actually mark him out at the 45-yard line, but it is enough to move the chains. So crucial on that second level once he gets to the hole, Dan. Oh, and his leg power, he, even finishing that drive, he'd already stepped out of bounds but had a guy coming up trying to tackle him, and he wouldn't uh, yep. give up. He just kept those legs driving and rolled the dude uh, as he's heading towards the end zone. Uh, again, he's out of bounds, but there's both of them are fighting and trying to stop, and he's just so powerful. Did a good job hurdling the guy right on the sideline also. 
First and 10 from the 44. Hanson in the backfield. He gives it to Hanson. Up the middle. He spins outside. Spins again and stays on his feet. Wow. Spins again. Get him to the 50 right at midfield. A gain of about six. And the way Shatart's playing, and Shatart's playing, a, you know, I'm going to call it a 3-5, but, you know, it could be 5-2 could, could really the way they're playing it because they've got two stand-up guys. They've got three down guys. They are trying to get into the gaps at Ron Colley. They know they've got, a, you know, a, a smaller line, so they're just, they don't want to go head-to-head. -head. And Ron Colley's doing some zone blocking, uh, but patience is the key in this running block. Second and five from the 49, a quick pitch pass forward. Over to the right side to Cogl, and he's got space. Gets the first down and more to the 40-yard line. Quick passes appeared a handful of times in this Royal offensive game plan the last couple of weeks. Used sparingly, but enough to be effective. Proves so there as it puts the Royals past midfield for the first time this evening. Well, it allows them to get blockers on the side. Hanson goes in front of it, becomes a, a kind of almost a, a fullback or a lead blocker on it. First and 10 from the from the Chittard 41-yard line. A wide receiver to the right, two to the left. Gives it to Hanson. Up the middle, keeps spinning for a gain of five. And give credit, especially here, we talk about all the line versus running back, running back versus line. We know it's a, it's a, a synergy-like relationship between these two, but these type of holes are being won in the trenches by the no line. No question. You can just tell no it. No question. And, yeah, and Hanson's being really patient, looking for the seam, and then he's got the speed to get up to 60 miles yep. an hour quickly. Yep. So he's just kind of patiently waiting, looking, yep. and when he sees light, yep. he hits it. Second and five. From the Trojans, 36, 3.15 to play in this first quarter. A wide receiver on either side. Moyers, hands off to Hanson, up the middle, follows his blockers, and he'll have the first down. Get him to the 29-yard line where he's finally brought down. Hanson, again, one of the top backs in the state without question, but it is just a perfect match made in heaven with the largest offensive line in the state. And one of the best running backs in the state working together in unison there. Well, and that was really nice. Uh, Brady knew the left guard went, did a little fold block around Luke Skartsweet to center. So it allowed him to get out and into the linebacker, which allowed Hanson just to tuck in behind New, just to follow him up the, up the, until they get way past the first down. They'll go pitch pass again, this time to Coughlin to the left side. He's initially tied up. He's pushed forward. About no gain on the play, however. Trojans were ready for it that time. Be second and ten. Second and ten from the Trojans 30. Still scoreless here from Bob Tully Field. In the rivalry matchup between number two, Ron Colley, and number one in class 3A, Bishop Chittard. Moyers receives directions from the sideline. Rolls out there, a wide receiver to the far right side. That's Sweezy. Joshua Harbors to the left. Moyers has Hanson to his right hip. Takes the snap, hand off to Hanson, goes up the middle, keeps the legs powering forward, and it'll set up third and medium. Dan, how much of that pitch pass type of look is to keep Chittard honest with this power game through the middle. It's, it, you're, again, you're attacking the outside like we talked about earlier. You can do the quick passes to yep. the corners, or this, this pass it forces the outside guys to – Staying contained, mm -hmm. which then if they know you can do that at some point, they're, they're slow to go inside, right. which opens up the Hanson run up the middle. Third and six from the Trojans, 26. Handoff is to Hanson, and he's swallowed up this time. Trojans were ready for it, but again, going off of the track record of Coach Quintana and company past midfield, not a lot to be lost by going for it here. You expect them to roll the dice once more. Well, they, they bring in Luke Swartz. They're going to bring a, a big package in here to get you know more big big boys on the line of scrimmage. They'll put him to the, the left end spot, put him next to Trevor Lauk, Brady New, and Scartsweet, and you don't have a guy under uh, you know, 290 at Roy that point. <laughs> Royals three of nine on fourth down this year. A wide receiver on either side. Fourth and six from the Trojans, 26. Moyers takes the snap. Give it to Hanson. Left side, powers oh. forward, and he ran into his own man. Turnover on downs. The Trojans hold. 
Rakai had all that power to that side, but, but Shatar knew it, and they did a great job of sneaking into the, uh, the gaps. Uh, you know, and that's, that's a situation where speed beats size sometimes. You know, and you get a little penetration, you get back through the line of scrimmage, and, and you know, it turned the, the, the shoulders of one of the Ron Kai linemen, and Hanson just runs into him, and, and, you know, it's hard to, you know, uh, you love the big boys, but if they can't, you can't run through them. Yep. And, uh, and it bit him that time. 43 seconds to go in this first quarter. First and 10 from the 27 for Bishop Chittard after the turnover on downs. Van Vliet takes the snap. Handoff out the middle to Kinnett. And he's brought down for no gain on the play in what will likely be the final play of this first quarter. So, so wait and see. It's all up to the Trojans in terms of what they want to do. They're going to let this run down, and this will likely be the last play of the quarter. They're lining up, but play clock ahead of the – or game clock, I should say, ahead of the play clock. Five seconds left in the quarter, a wide receiver on either side, and they're just going to let this run down. End of one quarter play in one of the top rivalries in the state, Ron Colley and Biff Chittard. Deadlocked. It's scoreless. Second quarter up next. You're listening to Ron Colley Rolls Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. ends up getting their way the rest of the second quarter. Appreciate you, Dan. Start of the second quarter, second and 10 from the Trojan zone, 27. Van Fleet has a wide receiver to the left, one to the right. Kinnett to his right hip, takes the snap, play action. Looks right, fires deep downfield. It's caught! It. Duck into the 10-5 touchdown. They take a deep shot, chance Aiden Duncan wins the one-on-one -on -one battle, and the Trojans draw first blood in this parochial rivalry. Simple fly route right down the sidelines. And, we, and we, we've talked about, you know, in the pregame and then all the first quarter, how good of an arm Van Vliet has. And he just backed up, did a little shoulder fake to try to suck the linebackers up. He didn't need it. And then just aired it out. And when he first let it go, I thought, ah, that looks maybe a little long. But Duncan did a great job catching up to it. And once he caught it, there was uh, no possible way he was going to get tackled. Jasper Chapman, 9 of 10 on point after tries, set for this PAT. Good snap, good hold. Kick is right down the middle. 11.51 left to play in the second quarter. One strike, 73 yards, and a touchdown. Biff Chittard on top of Ron Cowley, 7 0. Stay with us. Back in a moment, you're listening to Ron Cowley Rollins Football on the Ron Cowley Media Network. This year for Walkathon, it is possible and encouraged to collect donations online. Doing so starts as simply as going to roncolleyorg slash walk. This will take you to the campaign homepage. As you scroll down the page, you should see some preset donation values. 
Choose your desired donation amount, then search for the student you would like to donate to. Fill in your information when prompted, and you're done! This is Royals Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. Welcome back to Bob Tully Field. 11.51 left to play in this first half. The Trojans, a bit guitar, strike first, 7-0 on a 73-yard touchdown pass from Drew Van Vliet to Aiden Duncan, his third touchdown catch of the year. Ron Colley finds themselves in unfamiliar territory, trailing for the first time this season. Alongside Dan Bauer and Dan Lauk with a member of the broadcast team, I'm Jimmy Cook. Trojans set to boot it away. Ben Brandenburg back to receive for the Royals. It's going to be taken at the 10-yard line. Out to the 20, finally the 25, and that's where the Royals will start this drive. Let's send it down to the third member of the broadcast team, Dan Lauk. Dan, you had a bird's eye, or not bird's eye, you just had a sideline view, rather, of that deep shot, your observations on it. Yeah, I talked about it right before the break, but Shatard wants to go to the perimeter, right? And then they took the shot. Obviously, Van Vliet has a really strong arm. He put the ball in the money. Judson Laurie was right there in coverage, used his offhand, uh, which you don't teach there. So so next time he wants to stay engaged and keep an arm engaged there uh, and, and, and stay in coverage. But Royals get back to offense here, get the rhythm going. Well, good opportunity for the Royals to answer. We'll have Dan Lauk throughout the broadcast tonight. 11.45 left in this first half. Trojans 7, Royals nothing. First and 10 from the Royals' own 25-yard line. Snap, hand off to Hanson. He's got a hold of the 30, 35, spinning towards the 40. Has the first down plus 5 to move the chains for Ron Colley. And you got to think, if you even if they're airing out like that, Dan, that you can clean that up, but... Sticking to this game plan, winning up front, winning the middle is going to go a long way. Well, and, and the good teams respond. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, big plays equate everything. Sure. And so, you know, Shatard did what they had to do. Now Ron Colley's got to an answer, and they just got to keep their head and just stick with their game plan. First and 10 from the 38. Give us to Hanson. Up the middle once again to the 40, 45, spinning. Three Trojans finally bring him down right at the 45-yard line. It'll set up second and three. Hanson to this point, call it a five-yard gain that time. Twelve carries for 66 yards. Right around five and a half yards per rush. Second and one from the 47. High snap, gives it to Hanson. Up the middle. He's got the first down, carrying tacklers to the 45 of Biff Chittard. Luke Hanson in this O line, just what the doctor ordered, replicating to this point what they did last drive, continuing to pound the rock and move forward into Trojans territory. Luke Billerman pulled that time, went out to the end. It looked like the, the, the play was kind of designed to go outside, uh, you know, to that far outside guy. Hanson stuck it up more in the middle and got a really nice pickup for the first down. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Moyers hands off to Elsner on first and ten. Once again gains five, maybe six. And just churning out five, six yards every time he touches the football. Five, six yards and then some. Just Hanson's making big gainers, into mixing a groove there too. Right yep. now. The, the, you know, and the line are starting to pick it up, too. And, they, and their size will start to wear out the front of Chittard. You know, Chittard so far has been really active up front trying to get to the gaps and, uh, you know, kind of curating space. But, that, again, that will wear out. Second and four from the 39. Oh. Moyers keeps it this time on play action, and he's swallowed up a trio of Trojans, but give it to Jack Marcella. He's going to share that sack with a couple. And suddenly, second and manageable turns into third and medium. It's third and seven now for Ron Colley. I have to think that that was a broken play there, that the, you know, the running back went a little faster than the quarterback was yep. looking at or, or vice versa and uh, just didn't get the connection, so he held on to it and there was nowhere to go back there. Marcella had a, an ankle yep. injury. He has, I think this is his first game this year. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left, third and seven from the Royals' 42-yard line. Moyer steps up, fires over the middle, overshot his intended receiver. He was looking for Swayze. Sweezy, my apologies. 
Took a bit of a lick, too, on that throw, and now it's fourth down, and the Royals will be forced to punt. So the drive stalls once again for Ron Colley. They'll have to give it back to the Trojans with 9.09 left to play in this second quarter. BC leading 7-0. And Moyer didn't like the end of that play. He got smoked, but he, I, I like the fact that he stood in there. Actually made a pretty good throw. It, it sailed a little bit high, uh, too high to really get a, uh, a toss on it, but he showed some arm, arm strength, and, you know, I think it, it – it, Shows the uh, Chittard sideline that, okay, he can make the throw. Now it's just a matter of timing and getting it connected. Whistler punts it from the 45-yard line. Takes a Royals bounce. Going to try to stop it before it goes in the end zone, and they will right at the 5-yard line. Another punt inside the 20 for Levi Whistler. We'll take a quick break and be right back with 8.54 left to play. Royals lead it, or Trojans lead it, rather, 7-0. And actually, we'll stay here. Correction on that. 8.54 left to go in this second quarter. Alongside Dan Lauk and Dan Bauer, I'm Jimmy Cook. Ron Cowley in a hole for the first time this season. I've looked like at times they'd respond offensively, but two big plays within the drive on their last two forced Ron Cowley to punt it away. One of those two, of course, a turnover on downs. First and 10 for the Trojans on their own five-yard line. Two wide receivers to the left, two to the right. The handoff is to Kennett. Huh. He'll bump it back outside, and he's brought down maybe a gain of a yard on the play. And correction, Van Fleet actually hung on to that. He had a, another quarterback option opportunity. He kept it himself and got about a yard. Well, I don't know if you watched, but as, as the running back went through the hole, he turned around like, what happened to the ball? He thought he dropped it, and then Van Fleet kept it and went out. But, again, I think a broken play there that – uh, it was not supposed to happen that way. I don't think Van Fleet likes to run the ball either. Well, not a negative yardage play. It'll be a gain of one, second and nine from the Trojans' own six-yard line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Van Vliet takes the snap, rolls right. Pressure coming. Now he's going to take off and run oh, to the 10, speed. 15, picks up the first down. A little bit more mobility when comparing the two quarterbacks, at least there for Van Vliet. He, he heard me up here yeah, say he couldn't did, do yeah. it. Yeah, he wanted yep. to prove, hey, I can yep. run this ball, yep. but you could tell he didn't want to get hit. Yep. Yeah, he Quick was out of bounds. He knew, trying he knew to where go, the line was. Yes, he, he smelled Ron Colley coming at him, but he knew he had enough yep. space to get to the out-of-bounds marker. But, yeah, he did not want to get hit, and I understand that. That's yep. okay. It gives breathing room to Chittard, first and 10 from their own 16-yard line. 8-10 left to play in the second quarter. Chittard, 7. Ron Colley, nothing. Van Vliet receives direction from his coaching staff, a wide receiver to the right and one to the left, and now we're going to get a timeout taken by Chittard. We'll take one as well. 8-10 left to go in this second quarter. Chittard 7, Ron Colley nothing. You're listening to Ron Colley Royals Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. Meet Kate. Okay, I'll send that report. communications company. From creative services and strategy to print, signage, digital output, warehousing and fulfillment, mailing, e-commerce storefronts, and even mobile solutions. They are dedicating to helping their clients get the most out of their brand communication efforts with the quality they can see and results they can be sure of. Get the most out of your brand communications. Certified to be the best, Harding Porman. This is Royals football on the Ron Colley Media Network. First and 10 for the Trojans, 16-yard line. They'll hand it off to the far right side. Make that a pass to the right side, I should say. A gain of about a yard, perhaps two. And it'll set up second and nine for the Trojans. For whatever reason, the entire press box is very confused by that. I was confused by it. Well, ball did Our a good scorekeeper was confused by it. <laughs> Ball did a, a good job. Point. He came as a safety position, but he was up man-to-man -man coverage. Did a good job of covering the ball once it was uh, ta or, uh, completed uh, so that there wasn't much harm. Second and nine for their own 17. High screen pass incomplete intended for Riley Kennett. 
Van Vliet sailed that one just a tad, and it's third and nine. Ron Colley desperately looking for a stop, trying to get a little edge in the field position battle where they can. Well, Luke Hansen did a great job. Saw he read the running back coming out of the backfield there. Uh, he locked onto him and stayed with him, got his hands up high so that, you know, there was made the A, the, t the throw tough, and then the, the receiver pro probably couldn't see the ball because he, of Hansen. He's shown the last couple weeks he's the All-American, Dan. Does it on uh, both ends of the field. Why not? Why Wherever not? you need him, he's there. It'll be third and nine. Royals crowd getting into it for the Trojans on their own 17-yard line. Nobody in the backfield for Van Fleet. Two wide receiver on either side. Three-step drop. Pressure coming. He's able to avoid it. He's going to take off with his feet, and now he's got some space. Makes a man miss. Extends for the first down. Let's see where the spot is. I think he's going to have it. Royals had him dead to rights. Two men on either side. He kind of ducked and shimmied. And let's see where they mark this ball. Yep. First down. First down. Mm. Uh, Ron Colley had an opportunity there. That's kind of the uh, story of this first half. There's opportunities that Ron Colley's just kind of missing on, uh, which is keeping them, uh, yep. you know, from really uh, obviously leading this game at this point. Opens the playbook back up for the Trojans. First and 10 from their own 26-yard line. Three out receivers to the left, one to the right. Rolling right and caught and complete by Waugh to the 40. 45 Ooh. has the first down. Ooh. Hard hit near the sideline. Leveled home. Brandenburg come up and uh, laid the boom on him. Yep. Of course, unfortunately, there was a lot of uh, green space before he got there. A real nice play by Runk, yep. or by Shatard to set that up, get their guy out in space, drop it to him, and he was a, a good five yards from any red shirt. Uh, so it gave him plenty of opportunities to run and the, pick up yards. The Roncalli running game is getting what they want offensively, but the Shatard passing game is getting what they want yep. on their offensive end. First and ten from the Trojans' own 44-yard line. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Van Vliet takes the snap, hands off to Kennett. To the right side, 45-50. There's a flag. It's likely coming back. Let's confirm it to make sure it is a hold. Wait for official confirmation on that. Be our first penalty on the Trojans so far tonight. Yep. If it does Good stand. Good call, Jimmy. And they are going to move it back. No official mark yet, but that's likely to be the call. Unless you have the block in the back of some kind. but No, the white hat signaled it earlier. Oh, did he? You saw yeah. it? Okay. You are correct. We are correct. It's a hold. So that'll bump things back. Make it first in about 14. Well, and that hold. BC from their own 40. That hold was about five yards beyond, be, be, you know, behind the line, or in front of the line of scrimmage. Yep. Sorry. So, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not your normal 10 yards back. You think, you know, first and 20 but it only moved it back uh, about five yards from the original line of scrimmage. Van Fleet, two wide receivers to his left, one to the right, handoff up the middle to Kennett, and he's going to keep the legs churning to get some of that penalty yardage back. They'll call it second and 11 after a gain of three. And as Dan I mentioned on the sideline, as, as Ron Colley tries to get the ball out in space to create room up the middle for Hanson, Shatard does the same thing. Every once in a while they just run up the middle to force Ron Colley yep. to know that we're going to run it, but they're doing that to open up the outside. Right. So we've got two different game plans going on right now, uh, and – Shatard so far is working just a little bit better. 6.20 to play in this second quarter. Shatard with the football lead, 7-0, second and 11 from their own 43-yard line. Two wide receivers to the right, two to the left. Kennett in the backfield with Van Fleet. Van Fleet takes the snap, two-step drop. Screen pass to Kennett, swallowed up oh. in space. Oh, missed it. Tackle is made by Andrew Ball initially. Yeah, Set up third and long. Prendergast was the one that came up and cleaned it up. Uh, Ball did a great job of, of attacking it, and, and but he kind of rolled off right at the last minute, which is always a little bit dangerous, but nice pursuit by Ron Colley to come up uh, and, and clean up anything so that they get a nice loss on that. Well, now right it's down. third and 17 from the Trojan zone, 37-yard line. Bunch formation in tight near the line to the right. One wide receiver to the left. Van Fleet has Kennan on his left hip. Takes the snap. Gives to Kennett, right side, trying to find a hole. Makes a man miss. Won't get close to the original line of scrimmage, however. The original before penalty yardage line of scrimmage. He'll gain a couple, but it'll be fourth down and long, and the Trojans will send out the punting unit. Joey Alberta Right spot it. for the Royals. Sorry, Jimmy. Jo uh, Joey Alberta did a great job of pursuing from that inside linebacker position. Looked like he had him. Uh, he, he ended up sneaking out. But then what you love to see is Luke Swartz coming yep. from that nose guard position, you know, at all 300 pounds of him yep. and making the play out in space out there to, to stop it from a, a minimal gain. Ball stands the 20-yard line of Ron Colley. 
Good snap for the Trojans on this fourth and 13 punt. It's a skying high, sidewinding punt. Ball gets it at the 20 to the 30. So a return of about seven yards. And Roncalli will set up from their own 30-yard line. 4.40 left to play in this second quarter. Number one in Class 3A, Chatard leads number two in 4A, Ron Colley, 7 and nothing, alongside Dan Lauk and Dan Bauer. I'm Jimmy Cook. Thanks so much for joining us on a Friday evening for one of the greatest rivalries in the state. If you'd like a shout-out, please feel free to shoot us a text, either to Dan or you can hit me with a tweet on Twitter, at the J. Cook. First and 10 for the Royals, 31, two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Handoff to Hanson, up the middle, full head of steam to the 35, keeps the legs churning. Does he have enough for the first down? I think they're going to say he's a yard short. Nine yard carry by Luke Hanson. Let's wait for the marker. That's very close. They might just go ahead and move the chains. Chittard had a nose guard late coming onto the field, did not even get there by the time the snap, and, and Ron Colley hit it right at that spot. They will move the chains. First and 10, handoff to Hanson. Full head of steam up the middle to the 50, nearly another 10 yard gainer. Call it about eight on the play. The big boys up front doing hard work to get those holes for Hanson, and he's keeping the legs churning. Second and two from the 49 of Ron Colley. I've got a capital G-O-O-O-D. Did I do <laughs> enough O's in there? Yeah, I think you Let's did. Let's get those big boys moving. Hand off to Hanson up the middle on second and two. Now to the outside, tried to bounce it back. Woo. He swallowed up. Be a loss of about a yard on the play. And now it's third down. And again, this is the third straight drive where plays on second down have set up third in tough situations. For Ron Colley, it's just a third and three here. But what they do on this play very indicative to how the rest of this drive is going to go, Dan. No question. And what Shatard's really doing a great job of rebounding. You know, that you see a couple plays where they get nice yards, where we compliment the offensive line, that they're starting to move now. Shatard makes an adjustment, moves some guys into space, and then causes, a, you know, a no gain uh, to a Third loss. Third and three, handoff to Hanson. He's got the first down to the right side to the 45 of Bishop Shatard into Trojans territory now. And Ron Colley does what they need to do is rebound after you lose a yard or two, then you get back and you get back to what you were doing before, push it up, get another first down. And it's the back and forth uh, that, that you really need. And obviously you like to do more fourth than back, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's how do you answer the bell. First and ten from the Trojans, 45. Handoff is a hand set. He's got to hold the left side, make that Brandenburg, yeah. bat, rather. Change of pace back. He's going to have the first down yardage easily. 11-yard carry for Brandenburg, snuck in there, giving Hanson a quick breather. He lost his helmet, so he has to come out. So Hanson will come back in. Be first and 10 from the Trojans, 33-yard line, 3.06 left to play in this first half. Chittard leads 7-0. Ron Colley will receive the football to start the second half, looking for some points to close this half. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Handoff is to Hanson, swallowed up in the backfield. Great read by the Trojans. They overcommit that time heavily. Matthew Woods gets the penetration. Loss of three, second and 13 he, from he, the Trojan 36. He plays out of that nose guard position. He's 210 pounds up front, so he's not a big guy, but super athletic. Yep. Looks kind of like a wrestler type guy, I'm guessing. But he just stays low and gets penetration, really creates havoc for Ron Colley. And when he gets you, he doesn't let go. Second and 13, quick dump off to Hanson. High pass, makes a man miss. Hit hard from behind Ooh. and in front as well. Tackle is made by Isaac Fisher. It'll get them close to the original line of scrimmage. So call it third and 10, likely four down territory for the Royals at this distance. I think that's Hanson's first catch on the year. They don't typically to throw yep. to him, uh, you know, but... It was nice to see. It was a tough catch, kind of high, uh, but he, he did a good job stretching it up, pulling it down. Two wide receivers to the left in Coughlin and Harbors, one to the right in Sweezy. Hanson in the backfield. Moyers gives to Hanson. Up the middle, he's initially swallowed up, keeps the legs churning, and turns it in to a four-yard gain. Again, assuming it's four-down territory for Ron Cowley. Great play call there by Coach Quintana, and great effort there by Hanson to not go down when he had a – Hand wrapped around his shoestring. 90 seconds left to go, however. Clock is a factor as it stands right now. Fourth and seven for the Royals. With 125 to play in this first half, Chitar leads 7-0. And Ron Cowley, seeing that time is an issue, 
Going to call a timeout to reset things. Well, and Hanson came off the, the, the field kind of limping. It looked like he had a small cramp in his calf there. He got to the sideline, sat down, and started stretching. Uh, so they put Brandenburg in there. But I think that might have been a, a play. Let's go ahead and call a timeout, see if Hanson can get better, maybe give him a chance to get back in the game possibly. Uh, but they're rubbing him down. It doesn't look like he's coming back in. You might also be thinking about, eh, that's too long of a field goal kick. I think from here you have to go forward on fourth down. We'll keep it here with 124 left to play in this first half. Fourth and seven for Ron Colley. And if indeed, like you mentioned, Hanson had cramping issues last week. They were able to cure that within about a play or two. They've got him up, but he's not in the huddle. He's on the sideline. So have to assume that. Oh, and there he is. Now he walks towards the huddle and gets his helmet on. So perhaps Hanson is ready to go. Fourth and seven from the Trojans 30. Ron Colley trying to keep this drive alive. They'll put a wide receiver to the far left side, two to the right. Hanson did come back in up there and now. And Sweezy and Coglin. And Hanson, like we mentioned, is indeed back in there. Moyers has Hanson to his left side. Fourth and seven from their own 30. Sends a man in motion. It's Coglin rolling left. Now faking right. Trickeration to the right side. It's going to be enough for the first down. Great play call by the Royals. Nolan Tunney gets the first down. A misdirection pass. A lot of motion there, and Dan, it leads for first down yardage. That's a beautifully drawn up play. You know, you bring your, your stud back in there, let him look like you're going to run to the left. Got the quarterback running to the left. Oops, stop, turn to the other way, and, and you know, get it out to Tooney. Tooney's a great athlete. Get him the ball and get it in space and get that first down. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Give is to Hanson. Stutter steps up the middle, keeps the legs churning, and he's brought down after a gain of about a yard, perhaps two. A minute and ten left to go. Royals, two timeouts left in their back pocket. Chittard leads 7 nothing. The call to gain of two. Second and eight from the Trojans, 16. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Moyers in the gun, Hanson to his left side. A wide receiver in the slot as well on the right side. Moyers looks, fires right side to the slot. It's caught by Tunney to the 10, and he's forced out of bounds with 46 seconds left. And a late hit is going to be called on Biff Tatar. That's huge. And that was Kristen Sweezy that ended up getting that catch. But, yes, he was out of bounds, got a push, and that, that's going to move you up closer to the end zone. When Dan mentioned that is correct. It was Sweezy on the reception. Brandenburg is going to come out there. Let's see if it's to relieve Hanson or if they're putting both halfbacks out there. Yeah, it looks like maybe both. Moyer's going to receive some instructions. That'll move the ball all the way to the five-yard line. So first and goal for the Royals. They'll have a couple opportunities with two timeouts to work with. Clock, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, does stop because of that penalty. He was out of bounds anyway. Well, he's out of bounds, yes. And they haven't rolled the clock yet, so you still have 40 seconds. So they can sit and really kind of talk about this with their quarterback over there. You can't. That's what they're doing. Qu yeah. Quintana and Moyer is to talk on the sideline. And oh, it wasn't. Moyer's going to run out at wide out. So they're going to have a wildcat look. Hanson and Brandenburg in the gun. Coglin to the left side. And Shatar does not like any of this business. <laughs> They're going to call a timeout to talk it yep. over. We'll take our last one as well. 46 seconds left in the second quarter. Shatar leads 7-0 over Ron Cowley. You're listening to Ron Cowley Rolls Football on the Ron Cowley Media Network. Teacher, it was my scientific demonstrations that kept so many students after school. Most will say it was the electric ignition for cars that was my greatest contribution. <laughs> but my wife would argue it was the invention of Freon refrigerant for air conditioning. I'm a pioneer, and my name is Charles Cannery. Find your calling at Marion University's new Witcher School of Engineering. Pioneers wanted. Obviously a huge play there on fourth down with a little trickeration throwback to Tunney. Uh, it, high school coaches typically like to defer is to get that extra possession, and I think that's what Ron Colley's hoping here. If they can punch it in, Shatard might get the ball back. It's going to be limited time on the clock. You get that extra possession to start the second half. We'll see what they can do. Thank you, Dan. 46 seconds left. Ball on the Trojans, five. Shatard leads 7 nothing. Ron Colley looking for points. Again, they're going to run the Wildcat formation. Hanson and Brandenburg in the gun. Moyers to the right side. Coglin to the left. Ball on the right hash. 
46 seconds left before halftime. Hanson, your designated receiver of this snap. Ooh, Royals might have moved early. They did indeed. And that is what can happen when you bring out exotic packages. If everybody's not on the same page, they're used to different cadences. Offensive line with the false start there, and that'll move it back. Yeah, they were trying to get a blocking advantage. They had Tooney to the left side. They were they're going to bring Brandenburg on the right, and been, at the snap of the ball, put him in in front of Hanson to lead, give him the lead blocker. They were trying to pull the offensive lineman around. Yep. A lot of motion, and just didn't well, quite. So now, so now they're going to flip it. I apologize, Dan. Moyers to the far left side. They're keeping that formation out there. Hanson and Brandenburg to the left and right. Coglin to the right side. First and ten from the ten. Hanson. Takes the snap. He'll keep it himself yep. and walk into the end zone for a touchdown. Misdirection, penalty yardage, throw it out the window. It didn't matter, apparently, with Luke Hansen under center. A 10-yard carry, and the Royals are on the board with 41 seconds left to play in this first half. 7-6, Chittard leads. What I liked about that is they flipped the sides, as you said, Jimmy, what forced Chittard to really play the strength to that strong side. But what they didn't consider was that you've got Trevor Lauk and Brady New on the back side of that. And so it's although it looks like a, a complete flip of strength, you still have a strong back side. Hansen knew that. He didn't follow his backs to the outside. He went straight up the middle, getting behind Scar Tweet to, to you know, and again Chatard had had powered over to the far side, making a huge seam right up the middle. Hansen saw it, read it, and got a touchdown out of it. Good snap, good hold. Whistler's point after try is good. We've utilized all of our breaks, so we'll keep it here. 41 seconds left to play in this first half. 12 plays, 3 minutes and 59. Your time of possession, 69 yards on the drive. Capped by a Luke Hansen in the gun. 10-yard touchdown run. We've involved him a lot in this first half. We'll bounce it back to him briefly. What do you think of the misdirection out there, Dan Lauk? I'll ask you instead, Dan Bauer. I, I liked it. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Wildcat usually. Uh, you know, it, it just, it, it, to me, it, it makes it too one-sided. But again, as I explained before, I love the fact that they actually got to use it twice in a row, flipping it, making it look like they were going to the power strength, and then kind of forcing uh, Shatard to over, uh, you know, uh, react, so to speak, so that they ended up having a huge advantage on the backside of that play. And so it's, it's great creativity. And, and again. You, these two coaching staffs are really awesome. Oh, yeah. That's, you know, you've got great athletes. I don't want to take anything away from sure. this. The kids got to make the plays. But we're seeing some great coaching on both sides of the ball right now, trying to utilize the strengths sure. that each team has to try to gain advantage. And guess what? We're deadlocked at 7-7 seven and seven right now. Again, it's, it's indicative of this matchup, these coaching staffs, you know, and these two schools and their traditions. Royals set to kick it away. Chatard back to receive. Dudik. Stands back to return. Whistler, high end over ender that will go out of bounds for a, make that, sorry, back at the end zone rather, I corrected me on that, for a touchback. So 41 seconds left in this first half, and now the question remains, how aggressive will Chittard play this? Ron Colley gets the ball to start the second half. It's now tied. They've already had one big game touchdown on a go route. How aggressive are you playing if you're Shatard? I think you go ahead and play Shatard. No, no, play, play pretty aggressive, knowing you got a quarterback that has beat him once. Go ahead and see their arm strength, um, you know, because that you, you're looking for big plays, and you can do a big play in 20 seconds just as well as you can do one with eight minutes on the clock. So, uh, and I think you go ahead and do it. I don't think you give because you're giving up the ball if you don't try to make something out of this series. First and 10 from the Trojans' own 20-yard line. Two wide receivers to the right. Van Fleet has Kinnett to his right side. They'll hand it off to him to the left side. At the 20, 25, and that's coming back likely for a hold. Also, they don't play it aggressively. They instead, hand the ball off, and that'll be marked back with some penalty yardage. Well, you know, when you say not playing, Ron Colley's playing them to sure, not sure. give to up the stuff. Right. So, you know, they're, they're but, playing but, that but, outside run sure. to try to sneak a, a first down out of it, get out of bounds, stop the clock to, to maybe set up another pass. You know, so 
not I totally guess I'm aggressive. I'm disagreeing with it ph- philosophically. Correct. The way yes. Van Fleet has yes. passed the ball, and I, I just be passing I'm not it saying and, you're and wrong. But you I'm are just correct. setting yes. up what yes. they're yes. probably thinking right. in their head right. is just right. trying to sneak a couple yards yep. out, get get to the out the, yep. the sidelines, get out of bounds, yep. uh, make a, a, another throw just to force Ron Colony to make a mistake sure. coverage wise. Sure. But uh, obviously the hold. Really it's helps that out, that. and at now at this point, Shatard may start taking a knee or, or just kind of run the clock out because when you start going backwards, you, you don't want to have a mistake that would uh, give Ron Colley a chance to, to you know get their own score at the, at the end of this this half. And a big huddle by officials, the uh, officials yep. over there. Officials having a conference with 34 seconds left in this first half. First and 18 after the penalty yardage from the Trojans' own 12-yard line. Kind of have too many huddle ha- huddles happening. One with the man in the white hat. I think they're ordering a pizza. I mean, if it was me, I'd be getting a Gallagher's pizza. I like to do well, that every, yeah. every Friday night. There's no official pizza of Ron Colley Media Network. Gallagher's, if you're listening, you want to give me a call or give Aaron Hummel a call, we're more than happy to do it. Still no confirmation of what the discussion is, though, however. you have any guess? I don't. Penalty yardage, mark of the ball. Well, they're fine with it now, I suppose. Yeah, they didn't change the ball location. Nope. They didn't change the clock at all. I'm really not sure. Didn't see any change of uniforms. No uh, no issues there. All right, so 35 seconds and counting. First and 18 from the Trojans, 12. Not a very aggressive formation here. They'll again hand it off to Cannon. Up ahead, full head of steam. He keeps the legs churning. Keeps the ball rolling to the 30. Has the first down. And will the Trojans use a timeout here? Well, the, the clock will stop. The clock will they, stop with the chains moving. The chains, yeah. So if they get up to the line of scrimmage quickly, they won't have to burn one yet because they only have one left. Clock running, 20 seconds to go. First and 10 from the Trojans' 32-yard line. They're still not set. Precious seconds ticking away down to 15. Two wide receivers to the left, two to the right. And now the Royals will use a timeout, wow. not liking how they were set up defensively. So 14 okay. seconds left in this first half. Ron Colley and Chatard tied at seven apiece. Let's send it down to the third member of our broadcast team. Potentially, here's Dan Lau. Yeah, Jimmy, uh, there we go. New batteries, we're working Woo. now. Yeah, so uh, you know, defensively, is obviously for the Royals to keep everything in front of them. Uh, it, they forced Chatard to burn a timeout when they were on offense, which was a good thing. Chatard's low on timeouts now. So keep the ball in front of you, get into halftime, get the ball coming out of halftime. Thank you, Dan. We'll have Dan throughout the night, including his post-game chat with Royals head coach Eric Quintana. Big game for the coach. We didn't mention that in our pregame storyline. We did in the pregame interview with coach. But this is his old coaching stopping grounds. Came in to Chittard with Coach Doyle. Was his OC from the very beginning. And now departing there for his first head coaching job in the high school ranks. Here for Ron Colley. Says both places have a special place in his heart. But as far as he's concerned, he's a Royal for life now. First and 10 from the Trojan zone, 32-yard line. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Van Vliet takes the snap. Rolls right, waiting for something to develop. Fires far sideline over everybody. Incomplete with eight seconds to play in the half. But trying to utilize a little bit of, of movement by the quarterback to extend those routes and keep the Royals' defense honest, perhaps into making a mistake, but no doing there. Good coverage by Ron Colley. No, it's smart to get Van Fleet. And he gets out, looks at the coverage, sees that he's not getting any advantage, and throws it quickly out of bounds so that uh, he tries to save as much of the clock so he can try to, again, find another advantage here. But uh, as Dan said on the sideline, Ron Colley's going to keep guys back, and they're not going to give up that long ball. Be second and 10 from the Trojan zone, 32-yard line. Van Fleet, hands off, up the middle. To the 40, Good gain of about five, and the Trojans will not burn a timeout. That'll, well, let's see. Clock stopped. No first down was had. Yeah, I don't know why he was telling them to stop the clock. So two seconds left, and there's a flag down. That's why oh. it's going to go on the Trojans. Okay. So that'll move things back, and the way this drive has gone for Coach Doyle and company, He might be better off just to take a knee and head to the locker room. A little shift shift by Chittard. So it'll be second down and 15. The clock will immediately get rolling, and that'll end 
a weird end to this half for Bishpitard, but if you're a Ron Colley fan, you're giving high fives all around. The Royals used three minutes and 59 seconds, a 12 play drive that went 69 yards, capped off by a Luke Hansen touchdown from 10 yards out to tie this ball game after the Levi Whistler extra point. They get the ball to start the second half. Air came out of the place a little bit after that. Aiden Duncan touchdown catch, just briefly. Just briefly. Then the fans came back. Offense came back. Now you're rolling. You get the ball to start the second well, half. Well, we talked about how the, you know, it's the offense's job to come out after a big play like that to, you know, you're, you're, you're still the favorite in the game. You've got, you know, some big size advantage. You've got to take advantage of that and start moving that down the field. Ron Colley did that. They had a couple moments where he got a little nervous, uh, and they, they, they had a little play that used some uh, – uh, a tricky uh, set and then to get a, a first down to keep it going. But the key is keep those chains moving, keep the clock uh, ticking in your favor, uh, and put points on the board. And Ron Kai was able to do that. And, you know, that, that's, again, what you had to do and what you were looking for if you're Ron Kai, tie that game up and then win it in the second half. Let's set it down unless he's on his way up. I didn't coordinate this with me yet. So we'll, we'll stop that. We'll take our first break. Uh, you're here, but that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll take the commercial break, and we'll get Dan Lauk's thoughts as well as Dan Bauer's thoughts. Great halftime, beautiful atmosphere at Bob Tully Field. And for those of you that are watching at home, I'll give the shout-out now because I didn't do it at the start of the broadcast because I'll be honest with you, we had bigger storylines to set the table with. But beautiful new scoreboard out there as well, new signage. This looks beautiful. Not entirely new score, but new signage out there signage. for Ron Colley Stadium and Bob Tully Field debuting on this historic rivalry night. Ron Colley and Chittard deadlocked at seven apiece at the intermission. Stay with us. Halftime show is up next. You're listening on the Ron Colley Media Network. The starting goalkeeper, double zero, Anthony Mitchell. Number 17, Rosie Elsner. Number 13, Kaylee Heidelberger. And number two, Micah Wall. Number four, Laura Jordan. Number 35, Lauren Kill. Number, number nine, Whitney Mary. Number 12, Hannah Morgan. Number 18, Nina Serena. Number three, Sydney Horton. And now for your Lady Ron Cowley Royals. I got you. to deliver. Today's logistics marketplace is an ever-changing landscape. This is your IHSAA. This is your state. This is your high school. This is your athletic association. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and we're here to make sure that all of this remains yours. This is your state. This is your community. This is your IHSAA. IMCU, it's you that matters. Learn more at imcu.com. The Ron Colley High School Alumni Association is proud to support our current Royals and their athletic endeavors. If you'd like more information on how you can better support your alma mater, contact Director of Alumni Services Aaron Hommel at ahommel at roncolley.org or by phone at 787-8277, extension 242. You're listening to Ron Colley Royals Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. The halftime show has arrived. Let's go back up to the booth with Dan Bauer and the voice of the Royals, Jimmy Cook. Welcome back to Bob Tully Field on the campus of Ron Colley High School. Your 
inside the Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram halftime show. Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram treats the needs of each individual customer with paramount concern. Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram knows that you have high expectations, and as a car dealer, they enjoy the challenge of meeting and exceeding those standards each and every time. Allow them to demonstrate their commitment to excellence. Pay them a visit at Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram and schedule a test drive with one or more of their newer used vehicles today. Alongside Dan Bauer and Dan Lauk, I'm Jimmy Cook. Halftime festivities underway. Ron Colley and Shatar deadlocked at seven apiece. Ron Colley gets that scoring on the board in the second quarter. Both teams score in the second quarter, rather, right out of the gate. 73-yard touchdown pass from Drew Van Vliet to Aiden Duncan. Let's start with that for a second, gentlemen, and the overall passing attack of Chittard. Thought it would likely be a factor. They felt they put pressure on the Ron Colley defense early, although the Royals able to kind of level the playing field a little bit after giving up that long touchdown. Yeah, and, and Chittard's passing game is really their running game too, right? I, the kid's got such a strong arm that he's able to flick out those little spot passes uh, and, and get the offensive line moving. So, I, I, you know, I said it down there on the sidelines. Ron Colley wants to play this game in a phone booth, right? They want to play between the tackles, run the ball on both sides of the ball. Ron Colley's defensive line is their dominant side of the part of the defense. Chittard wants to get it out on the perimeter and, and play the game on the perimeter. And we saw the game kind of go back and forth between – you know, who was able to, to really do what they wanted to do. Ron Colley kind of got control at the end of the half the, here. And, and what I really want to see, you know, people might think it might have been a goal-to-go formation, that Wildcat formation. But if, you, if you're really struggling to throw the ball and you don't have a mobile quarterback, you got to be able to run that quarterback. And, and the way to do that is to bring in an extra running back, right? And, and that really paid dividends down there on the goal line. So I'd like to see Ron Colley get back to that formation you know, not just on the goal to go downs, but but throughout the rest of the second half. A similar stance, but let's switch to the Ron Colley side for just a second. Yeah. Their offensive attack. I know you're a man that lives in the trenches, and they were delivering for you left and right, finally able to get pay dirt, as Dan Lauk mentions. No question. Finally capitalizing with that unique formation, yeah. wildcat look, if you will. Despite the penalty yardage, able to get the look they wanted and take it for a house call. And, and to me, it's a little concerning if you're Ron Colley right now. You've got, you know, two game plans came into this on each side of the ball. Ron Colley's got big guys up front, a really good running back. Let's pound it up the middle, keep it in that phone booth. Uh, Chittard's doing what they wanted to do. Let's keep it outside that phone booth, get the ball outside, get, get it to our playmakers, let them make moves. Let's not let the big guys control the game. I think Chittard, if you go, if you look at it and they say, okay, a seven-seven game at the halftime, we're happy with that. Uh, we've done what we've done. We've been able to score. Uh, you know, they they there, there's some things that they could have done better to, to maybe get some other drives in there to give them other opportunities. But if you're Ron Collier, you look at it and go, we're having to do some trick plays to get our points on the board a little bit. Now they obviously had some drives and nice running to get them there, but to get that crucial first down, you know, they had to do that trick play a little bit and do a, a sneak play to get Hanson in the end zone I would rather if my strength is pounded up the middle I want my pounded up the middle guys to be able to score and right and Shatard has stopped them from doing that so again I we talked about last week you go into the uh, halftime report uh you know and you're the coaches uh, I think you got to get on them a little bit more you know, to say hey we you know we are a power football team and we are not powering the game we got to want this game and we got to win it and we've got to prove that we've got the strength up front you know, and there's a couple plays, that fourth and four play, uh, you know, I, they didn't get the push they needed at all, you know. And there were some guys in there that you're counting on to be your, your, your studs up there who have been turned around by the defensive line. You can't have that happen in that situation. And so Ron Colley's got, again, more stuff to talk about, more stuff to coach on. And I think they really work to, you know, make it uh, their advantage in the phone booth. Eric Moyers is a first-time starter. You can tell he's getting more confident as things flow on. Does it concern you at all moving forward when some of their bailout plays have been new formations or trick plays to move the ball down the field that might not be sustainable long-term once that's seen on film? Uh, no, okay. not, not yet. Okay. You still have a young quarterback in game three. You know, you know he's a project that you're hoping by the time you get to the playoffs, he's ready to go. 
you got Shatard in week three. Right. They are one heck of a as football team, and they are coached team. really well. So I think you, you know, and you might even mention to him, hey, we're doing this to win this football game right. because they're so well coached and they got such good athletes. This is not a sign that we don't trust you. Right. You know, we just want to win this game. Yeah. And so I think that you can coach out of that. That's my opinion, at least. Yeah, I'd echo that as well. I mean, it's not just the inexperience at quarterback. The wideouts are very inexperienced sure. as well. So you're you're doing everything you can to establish the pass game, but at the same time, you're trying to beat the biggest right. rival on your schedule. Right. So you got to do what you yeah. got to do. Yeah. yeah. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, we'll have more, including a look at stats and adjustments on both sides. This is the Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Halftime Show. Ron Colley and Chittard tied at seven apiece at the halftime break. You're listening to Ron Kyle Rolls Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. The Ron Colley High School Alumni Association is proud to support our current Royals and their athletic endeavors. If you'd like more information on how you can better support your alma mater, contact Director of Alumni Services Aaron Hommel at ahommel at roncolley.org or by phone at 787-8277, extension 242. This past spring, Ron Colley celebrated Roar Survival Safari. We want to once again thank those sponsors that made such a special night possible. Ascension St. Vincent, Marion University, Steve's Flowers and Gifts, Indy Teledata, Harding Porman, Laundry and Tan Connection, O'Reilly Branson Funeral Service and Crematory, Quality Supply and Tool Company, James Babcock Incorporated, Wolf Family Dentistry, Catholic Business Network, Indiana Members Credit Union, Beck Automotive, and the Catholic Youth Organization. Thanks to all these great sponsors for contributing to our adventure at Roar Survival Safari. When looking for reliable HVAC professionals, look no further than Ana and Bartram Heating and Cooling. Whether you need a routine maintenance check or an emergency repair on a heating or cooling unit, Ana and Bartram are available to handle all of your heating, cooling, and ventilation needs. Ana and Bartram strive to be the best, so call them today at 317-889-9574. They even have 24-7 emergency service. Call them today, Ana and Bartram, 317-889-9574. Hi folks, it's Ben Stallings with Beck Service Center. Automotive breakdowns and routine maintenance never come at a good time. Let us help take the stress out of your automotive repairs. With 10 mechanics and 32 bays, we can get you back up and running with minimal downtime. Quality parts, experienced mechanics, locally owned and operated since 1977. Located at the southeast corner of Madison and Edgewood, we are pretty darn good at fixing cars. Let's go Royals. You're listening to Royals Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. My granddaughter sent to us. Welcome back to Bob Tully Field, honoring state champions all around at halftime. Boys volleyball winning state. Thank you. Girls softball capturing back-to-back -back state titles on their End of things, always good to honor fellow Royals. Halftime between Chittard and Ron Colley, 7-7, deadlock between the two programs. Take a look at some of the stats. Both those teams get their touchdowns out of the second quarter. 28 total passing yards for Ron Colley, 128 for Chittard. 125 rushing yards for Ron Colley to 50 for Chittard. Luke Hansen leading the way offensively for Ron Cowley. No surprise there. That's been the staple of this Royals offense. 22 carries, 117 yards. Long of 14, one touchdown to his credit. 5.3 yards per carry tonight. Also has a couple of catches in there as well. Nolan Tunney, a reception for 12 yards. Dylan Coughlin, two catches for 10 yards. To give some shout outs along the Ron Colley offensive side of things. Five tackles for Andrew Ball, five for Luke Schwartz, three for Ben Brandenburg. A couple tackles for loss there for Luke Schwartz and Nolan Tunney skimming through the Ron Colley defensive stats. Adjustments you'd like to see. Let's first start with the opponent. Let's start with Chittard. Uh, either Dan, I'll let you take this. What would you see if you're in that Chittard locker room? game plan adjustments here for half number two? I don't know if you do too too many adjustments, really. I mean, I think Chittard really did what they needed to do, and, and they're in really good position. I think in the locker room, you, you kind of say, hey, let's keep doing what we're doing. You know, we're going to try to keep getting it into space, keep trying to make plays. Uh, you know, I think 
uh, defensive line, you, you, you keep telling them, you know, you're going to get tired, of, you know, getting beat on every single play, but just kind of keep pushing it. We'll try to rotate you in and, and try to keep give you some, some breaths, you know, but keep getting up and, and, and putting pressure on uh, Ron Colley's offensive line and their running game uh, because if you can take that away, then that puts you in a good position. Uh, switch gears to the Ron Colley side of things. Uh, more of the same. What do you like to see out of them second half? Uh, that, that. Good, uh, you, you look at Shatard first half, total yardage, 178 yards. That looks pretty nice. 73 of those came on the long pass. So I think for Ron Colley defensively, it's limit the big play, uh, make Shatard chunk it down the field, similarly to how Shatard has, has forced us to really chunk the ball down the field. Uh, and then offensively for us, you obviously can't get away from your bread and butter. Uh, like Dan said, you got to get a little mo more push up front from your offensive line, and you got to find a way to get the numbers in your favor. Shatard's going to have eight in the box every single time. So whether that means running the quarterback, getting the screen game going, uh, something along those lines, we got to find a way uh, to get the numbers back in our favor so we can get more of those chunk plays, those big yardage plays. We're going to take our final break of the Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram halftime show. We come back. We'll have the kick. Ron Colley and Chittard. Second half about to get underway. Royals receive the football. Tied at seven. You're listening to Ron Colley Royals football on the Ron Colley Media Network. A proud supporter of Ron Colley High School, Indy Teledata provides IT solutions for businesses and organizations in central Indiana. For over 10 years, Steve Battiato and his team of professionals have provided comprehensive computing support, business telephone solutions, network infrastructure, and productivity suite integration. For a free evaluation of your technology needs, give Steve and his team a call at 317-231-5547 or visit us at IndyTeledata.com. While others focus on simply facilitating a transaction, Century 21 agents like Sarah Lux believe in the value of delivering extraordinary experiences by defying mediocrity and always giving you 121%. Find your new home or sell your current home with the best. Contact Sarah Lux at 502-6253 or online at listwithlux.com. That's Sarah Lux at listwithlux.com. List with L-U-X.com. When looking for reliable HVAC professionals, look no further than Ana and Bartram Heating and Cooling. Whether you need a routine maintenance check or an emergency repair on a heating or cooling unit, Ana and Bartram are available to handle all of your heating, cooling, and ventilation needs. Ana and Bartram strive to be the best, so call them today at 317-889-9574. They even have 24-7 emergency service. Call them today, Ana and Bartram, 317-889-9574. Meet Kate. Okay, I'll send that report. Kate juggles a lot working from home. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we know Kate. We know she needs more room. We're here to help Kate and you by offering a special low intro rate on an IMCU home equity line of credit. Today, it's all about Kate. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Subject to credit approval, IMCU is an equal housing lender and federally insured by the NCUA. Learn more at IMCU.com. Steve's Flowers and Gifts is your family-owned Indianapolis and Greenwood florist. Our mission is to establish and maintain the highest level of floral value and customer service at comfortable consumer prices. For the best and freshest flowers in Indianapolis and surrounding areas, Steve's Flowers and Gifts has exactly what you're looking for. Check out our wide selection of flower arrangements to make your next occasion memorable. Call 317-787-3431 or visit us at 3150 East Thompson Road. Never lose your drive to deliver. Today's logistics marketplace is an ever-changing landscape where you can make your mark through dedication and passion. At SPOT, these characteristics, along with drive and teamwork, form the basis for a rewarding, fast-paced career. Take it from our Ron Colley co-founder and our dynamic group of Royals alumni. They've never lost the entrepreneurial spirit that provides the foundation for our continued success. There's never been a time like this, and there has never been a partner like SPOT. We're relentless. We are experts. We are accomplished, and like you, we will never lose our drive to deliver. Come find your spot at spotinc.com slash careers. Go Royals. Two quarters down, two quarters of Ron Cali Royals football to go. Let's go back to the booth with Dan Bauer and the voice of the Royals, Jimmy Cook. Welcome back to Bob Tully Field alongside Dan Lauk and Dan Bauer. I'm Jimmy Cook. 
Here on the campus of Ron Colley High School, Royal set to receive the second half kick. Triple zeros on the clock, halftime now over. Ron Colley seven, Chittard seven. Thanks so much for joining us. If you'd like a shout out, hit me with a tweet on Twitter. Hit a follow while you're there as well, at the Jay Cook. Tom and Therese Weisenbach enjoying the sunset on Nokimi Beach, Florida, listening to the Royals. Let's go. Of course, you can also, if you have that private bat phone line, you can send a text to Dan Bauer or Dan Lauk. Maybe get a shout out throughout tonight's broadcast. Brandenburg set to receive for Ron Colley, stands at about the 10 yard line. Ball back there as well. Kick is an end over ender that's going to stop about the 15, and that's where Ron Kyle will take it. Ball at the 15 to the 20, 25, <coughs> keeps turning the legs, and he's finally brought down at about the 27 yard line. Make that Henry Adams, rather, my apologies on the return. Good return by Henry. So Ron Cowley will set up shop to start this second half from about the 37-yard line. Looked pretty sharp. Final two drives, Dan. One of them ends in a score. The other one prior to that, they get turned away a bit, but offenses seem to get what they want in the running game at will. Yep, and similar to last week when Ron Cowley came out at halftime, they, they got to start at the five-yard line and was able to run it down and you score. That's kind of the goal to, of, of this first uh, possession by Ron Cowley. Get that offense. You got them in the uh, you know the locker room. They're kind of tired or you know rested now. Let's get up and move it up and down the field. One wide receiver right, one to the left. Handoff is to Hanson to the left side, trying to find the edge. He'll gain about a yard. Second and nine from the Royals' own 29. Shatar did a good job of stringing it out there, not giving Hanson much room. I, I can't tell where they really marked. It looks like about the line of scrimmage, so didn't give up much there. So perhaps no gain on the play, as Dan mentions. Oh, wait, they're backing it up. Must be a penalty flag well. somewhere. Like potentially a hold. Yep. It is holding. On Ron Colley. These guys are doing a good job of uh, keeping their flags where I can't see them. Usually, the, 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 you know, you see a flag come in or, or it's out in the middle of the play, but they keep marking yards off. Yep. We don't know what they're doing, and it's a penalty somewhere, but I don't know where the flags are. So first and 20 now <coughs> for the Ron Colley own 18. Hanson to the left side. High snap up the middle to Hanson, and he's thrown backwards. Well, you saw areas – particularly in that first half. One of the biggest offensive lines in the state, Ron Colley, dominating at will. One play sample size, but a better answer from Chittard, at least in terms of containing up the middle. Second and 19 now from the Royals 19. They'll call it a gain of one. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Hanson to the right of Moyers. Trojan show pressure. Hanson up the middle, Ooh. and he's swallowed up. And where that pressure was applied from, Wade McAllister, he's the man that made the tackle. Came out of a safety blitz coming from the left side there. Uh, and Ron Colley did not pick it up. He came down at a free shot at Hanson as he came up to hit the, the play there. Well, this is the one area <laughs> as Ron Colley continues to try to build towards an aggressive passing attack or balanced passing attack, rather, where you're going to be tested if you have early penalties in drives. Ron Cowley trying to keep the drive alive here, third and 17. A wide receiver to the left, two to the right from their own 21. First drive of this second half, pressure coming. Moyers, quick pass to Coughlin. Caught at the 20, stands on his feet to 30. He's got a hold of the 35, and he's brought ah, down from behind. Do say yellow flag down But there now. is a flag down at about the 25-yard line, likely coming back. Going to go against the Royals. Luke Scartoy with hands on his head. Let's wait for confirmation. Royals not happy with it. Pushing the back. He's going to be blocking the back on Ron Colley. Mm -hmm. So you'll call it third and 22 from the Ron Colley 16 yard line. Last time, Trojans brought full pressure. Will they bring it again? 
having a discussion with the offensive lineman up there. It was obviously called on one of the big boys down the field there. It was about 10 yards past the line of scrimmage, but they're not agreeing with the call. Third and 22 from the Royal Zone, 16. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Moyers takes the snap, has time, steps in the pocket, Stay pressure from behind, looking, fires over the middle, picked off and intercepted by the Trojans, the 45-yard line, trying to keep the play alive, and they will indeed at the 42. Well, Moyers had time. He fired it over the middle, but into double coverage. And the Trojans get the INT. Ordinarily, I would say that it, it maps out right, but with the leg Whistler has, that's yeah. a little bit better than a punt. That's a pretty nice return if you're playing Chittard's that type of mindset. very happy with that yep. return there. Yep. And it's, again, a young quarterback. He did a great job of yep. staying in there, not panicking, waiting, waiting, waiting. The air was don't throw it up in the middle of the field. Yep. Chittard had too many white shirts in there. You want to throw it to the outside if you're going to try to kind of a, a prayer and a hope. Gives you a little bit better chance of your wide outs making a play. Van Fleet, play action. Looking far right side on an out route. It's caught initially, no. then Did he dropped. Catch it again? No, he dropped it. Okay. Thought he was able to bobble it and catch it himself. Attended for Aiden Duncan, but he could not. Oh, with a quick high out route. It'll be second and 10. 10 03 left to play in this third quarter. Ron Colley and Chatard tied at seven. Chatard's first drive, trying to capitalize after the Ron Colley interception. A wide receiver to the left side. That's Dudik. None to the right. By the Ron Cowley defense. No gain on the play. Maybe a yard if the refs are generous. Generosity they're feeling, I think. It's going to be third and nine. Well, Long nine. Yeah. 9.5. <laughs> our, our scorekeepers, rightfully so, call it third and ten. That's what I'd call it as well. It's pretty yeah. close to that marker. So Ron Cowley defense trying to stand tall and get off the field after that interception. Third and ten. From the Ron Colley 42, a wide receiver to the right, three to the left for Van Fleet. Kennett's on his right side in the gun. Takes the snap, three-step drop, pressure coming, quick screen, Ooh. falls in the air and incomplete. Royals read it the whole way. Great coverage there by George Martin, who had that interception in the end zone in the first quarter. And the Trojans are going to send the punting unit onto the field. Great response by the Royals' defense. Yeah, with that ball thrown behind the line of scrimmage like that, you go ahead and attack just like they did. They went up, attack, got a hand on the ball, popped it up a little bit. Slight chance you get an interception there. Uh, you know, but the, it was, again, popped up and went the opposite direction. But, again, a really good uh, answer by the Ron, the, the, uh, Ron Colley defense to, to shut uh, Shatard out and not take advantage of that interception. Ball stands at the 10, and that's a line drive punt that's likely to get in the end zone unless there's some backspin on it. There is not. It's going to go into Good the call. end zone for a touchback. So Ron Colley, crisis averted, at least from that first drive. And if you're in the ear of Moyers, you're just talking to him, telling him to regain that confidence, not worry about it, move on to the next play. It's set it down to the third member of our broadcast team in Dan Lauk. Dan, your thoughts on that last drive by Ron Colley and the need for just reassuring Warriors in the offense coming in on this drive. Yeah, obviously they're going to need some confidence, uh, and you got to find that through some quick hitters. But then defensively, you saw a clear adjustment there from Ron Colley, bringing, uh, doubling one of Shatard's receivers on every play that last time, bringing a guy out of the box and forcing Shatard to run up the middle. Thank you, Dan. First and 10 from the Ron Colley, 29.06 left to play, third quarter. Shatard and Ron Colley tied at seven. A wide receiver to the left, one to the right for Moyers, who has Hanson to his left. Little clap, Cadence count, sends a man in motion, now takes the snap. Hand off to Hanson, up the middle, keep those legs churning, but more and more white shirts committing inside the box for Chittard, a gain of about two there. He was averaging about five to seven yards, and that's not to say there's anything going wrong on the trenches and the old line necessarily, at least unless you're seeing something there. No, it, 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 they're, they're playing numbers, yep. and, and similar to what Dan was talking about there, where Ron Kai makes an adjustment, jumps outside yep. to and make it tough. Chittard is putting more guys in the yep. box and, and you know, begging them to throw the ball, and Ron Kai is choosing not to do it so far. Second and seven, Hanson somehow gets three yards out of that. Second and seven from the Ron Cowley 23-yard line. A wide receiver to the left, one to the right. Hanson to the right side of Moyers. Moyers drops back and hands off instead to Hanson, who keeps the legs turning forward to the left side, out to about the 25, make it to 26. He'll gain a couple more, make it third at about four. And, and, and what I'm meaning by that, what they're doing is they're, they're basically man-to-man -man coverage on the far side. Corners are going man-to-man -man against Ron Colley's uh, wideouts. 
They're, they're sending a safety up. Now, not necessarily an all-out blitz, but they're bringing him up, walking him up to where he's another linebacker to the, the strong side usually, uh, although that side they went to the sideline uh, you know, side of the play, which is where Ron Collin ran the ball, uh, and that player made the play because you don't account for him in your blocking scheme generally. Third and four from Ron Cowley's own 26. Moyers takes the snap, gives to Hanson. He makes a stutter step, spins back inside, keeps the legs churning, and I think he's going to be about a yard short of that first down marker. If that's the case, I guess we'll say decision time for Ron Cowley on fourth and one from their own 29. Defense has played well, but you also know you have the best old line in the state. And it looks like the Royals are going to go for it. Wow. Big moment in this ball game. Ron Cowley fourth and one from their own 29 with 7.15 to play in the third tie ball game. Moyers hard count, and let's see if that's the game they're playing with 15 seconds left on the play clock. They'll look back to the sideline, 10 on the play clock now. Moyers sends a man in motion, five on the play clock. Moyers takes the snap, Ooh. give us to Hanson, looks for the hole. He's got the first oh. down yardage. We're playing in Vegas now, Jimmy. Riverboat Quintana. <laughs> Moving the chains, plus five yards on top of it. And it's enough for a Royals first down. Great play up front as well. Create that hole for Hanson and using the good vision to find the hole. They did a great job, you know, and they, they waited on the count and almost, you know, got them thinking, okay, they might call timeout right yep. now, snap it, and then upside, and then, but then a great job, as you mentioned, parting the seas in the middle, giving them plenty of room for Hanson to kind of dance up through the middle uh, and then get a couple extra yards First on top of it. First and 10 from the 34, Moyers, three-step drop, Ooh. fires a fade <clears throat> route down the sideline, had a oh. duty, oh, no, he dropped it. That's a great route. A beautiful route. They found an opening on the back end of the Trojans' defense, but Tunney just could not bring it in. Christian Sweezy was on the outside. He did look like a fly, but then he went to the inside, forced the corner to stay with him, which opened up that outside. They brought Tunney from the inside out, and they kind of crossed receivers. Great throw. Uh, Moyers put it right where it needed to be played. That's, it's a very small window out there. They, you know, they're pressing the sidelines. He did a great throw. Should have been caught. Should have been a first down. Could have been more. Second and 10 from the Royals' own 34. 625, make it 628 rather, left in this third quarter, still tied at seven. Moyers once again drops back to pass. Pressure coming, quick throw, caught by Swayze. Good tackle. Tackle made immediately by Zach Gardner, but it'll be a gain of five, make it four, third and six now for the Royals from their own 38 yard line. And I tell you what, I don't mind what they're doing right now. Let's get, let's force Moyers to get in this game. Let's, uh, you know, let him throw a nice long one. He proves he can throw that, hit that. Let, let's show that they can, uh, you know, show a nice underneath route, connect on that. Let, let's, let's let Shatar realize, okay, he can't throw the ball, and let's let, let's let him grow. One wide receiver to the right, one to the left. Third and six from the Royals' own 38. Give us to Hanson, looking for space up the middle. He's got the first down. Went middle and then adjusted. <laughs> Slightly to the right to Hanson. move the chains for Ron Colley. Luke Hansen using that great ball carrier vision. And he wanted more. Yeah. He, he oh, knew yeah. there was one guy there that if he beats him, he's got a bigger pickup. Uh, unfortunately, he got he kind of got him with his shoulders turned a little bit, brought him down, got the first down. But Hansen, again, he, he saw some daylight that he wanted. The first and 10 from the Royal Zone 45 yard line, a wide receiver on either side. Moyers, a little eye formation look almost. In the gun, hands off to Hanson. Make that Brandenburg, rather. He'll adjust and pick up four. Ben Brandenburg, when he's been called upon throughout the season, the junior rising to the occasion, making good gains, picks up four there. Well, and Chittard again brought that safety up to that left side. Looked like he was coming on a blitz. Brandenburg cut back right to where that guy was, and that guy had disappeared. I'm not sure if he got blocked or if he pulled back off of it, but, uh, you know, a nice cut by Brandenburg. Hanson lined up, make that Brandenburg right there, sorry. Handoff is to Brandenburg. He'll keep the legs turning, close to the first down yardage. And my apologies. No, nope, it is, it is Brandenburg. Yeah, you got better eyes. Don't worry. Don't listen to him. <laughs> I, 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 I trusted our, our true upstairs. You're right. Need to go with my guns. So Brandenburg, the last two carries, and they'll say he didn't get the first down yardage, so it's third and one. I don't know about that. Looked like he got it from our edge. But they'll say third and one. They're past midfield now at the Trojans' 46-yard line is Ron Colley with 4.18 to play in this third quarter. Deadlocked at seven apiece. 
One wide receiver on either side for Moyers. Has Hanson on his left hip, who just checked back into the ball game. Handoff is to Hanson. Up the middle, got the first down. Gains two. Trojans were ready, but Hanson just a step quicker in the O-line, creating that hole for him once again. Well, and Tooney made a nice block coming from that H-back position over, kind of a trap on that, that, that three technique, uh, and, and Hanson cut right off of that block, and just enough seam there to, to get him the first down. But, uh, again, a really nice design play uh, with the guys up front taking the, care of those guys, leaving the, that three technique open and letting Tooney take care of him. Swayze to the top. Coglin to the right. Moyers in the gun. First and 10 from the Chittard 43. Give us to Hanson. Makes one man Whoa. miss. Nice move in the backfield by Hanson. He'll turn on what could have been no gain into a gain of six. We just watched the magic show. I'm here, now I'm not yep. here, now I'm here again. He totally just a little sidestep. Totally had that. It should have been an easy tackle, uh, but that little slight move. He disappeared on that, that guy that would be tackler and didn't have a chance at it. And that's the fascinating thing about Hanson is he has the great old line, but he doesn't just do that in the backfield. He does it in space, too. A human joysticks at times with his vision and his moves. Second and six from the Trojans, 39. A wide receiver on either side. Moyers has Hanson behind him. Give us to Hanson up the middle. Knife's through to the 30. Makes a man miss. Now spins. Has the first down. Down at the 29-yard line. It'll move the chains and put Ron Cowley just nine yards, eight yards outside of the red zone. You're seeing Hanson just getting a little bit more space in there, and, and now he came off again because of his little cramping issue. So they're they're going to have that wrestle on that probably the rest of the game. But, uh, you know, Brandenburg has shown he's got plenty of uh, ability to step in there and get pick up yards. First and 10 from the Trojans' 28-yard line. A wide receiver on either side. Moyers has Brandenburg behind him. Takes the snap. Play action. Fires. Quick slant. High pass. Ooh. Nearly picked. Ooh. Zach Garner had it in his hands and dropped it. Moyers once again on his backside to a hard hit. Wade McAllister came that linebacker spot and hit him in the backside. Blindsided him, but uh, Moyers stood in there, made a, a little high of a throw, but used some muscle to get it in there. One wide receiver on either side for Moyers. Brandenburg still in there at tailback as Hansen gets looked at with the cramps. Like we mentioned, he's high heat conditions. Nice night altogether, but when you're out there going a mile a minute, you can understand. Hand off to Brandenburg, right side. He's got a hole near the first down. Marker lunges for it. Be about a yard short. Call it third and a yard, maybe two. They'll call it third and two from the Trojans' 20. Market is four down territory throughout for the Royals. Swayze, Swayze, excuse me, to the top. When they continue that, one to the right. Sorry about that, Jimmy Swartz in that, that jumbo package. Third and two, handoff to Brandenburg up ah. the middle. I don't think he got it. Nope. Be about a yard short. Hanson comes back in. Brandenburg, great work in relief, but it's fourth and one. Ron Cowley's taken plenty of time off the clock on this drive, north of seven to eight minutes. 124 left in this third quarter, still tied at seven, fourth and one from the Ron Cowley 19. Coglin and Sweezy on either side. Moyers has Hanson to his left. Man in motion is Elsner. Takes the snap, gives to Hanson, right up the middle. He has the first down yardage. Oh, and, right forward. and he's there for the touchdown. 19 yards on the ground, up the middle for Luke Hanson. He puts Ron Kelly in front for the first time tonight. Point after try pending, 13-7 Royals with 101 left to play in this third quarter. And that's the beauty of what Hanson does. That play is designed to get the first down, period. But yet Hanson... Keeps those feet moving, and, and uh, you know, the, the, the defense is deflated because they didn't stop him for the first down. Hanson punishes him and gets that first down not, and puts six, six points up on the board, hopefully seven after this kicker here. Whistler, low snap. Point after try is good. Did not matter. 101 left to play in this third quarter. 
Ron Colley drives down the field and puts together eight minutes and five seconds of game time off the clock. 16 plays, 80 yards, captivated by the Luke Hansen 19 yard strike. They lead 14 to seven, we'll take a break as well. With 101 left to play here in this third quarter, you're listening to Ron Kyle Royals football on the Ron Colley Media Network. Harding Porman is a full service printing and brand communications company. From creative services and strategy to print, signage, digital output, warehousing and fulfillment, mailing, e-commerce storefronts, and even mobile solutions. They are dedicating to helping their clients get the most out of their brand communication efforts with the quality they can see and results they can be sure of. Get the most out of your brand communications. Certified to be the best, Harding Porman. This is Royals Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. 101 left to play in the third quarter. Ron Colley goes out in front, courtesy of a 19-yard touchdown run from Luke Hansen. 16 plays, 8 minutes and 5 seconds of game time, 80 yards. The drive goes for Ron Colley. A fourth down, go for it situation in there as well. Levi Whistler's kick will get all the way to the end zone for a touchback alongside Dan Bauer. I'm Jimmy Cook. Let's set it down the third member of our broadcast team, Dan Lauk. Dan, quite a drive by the Royals to go out in front. Absolutely, Jimmy, and can't emphasize how difficult that is to do. You mentioned it, an eight-minute drive there. And to be able to, to continue to push the ball down the field, convert on fourth down, and put together such a long drive without any penalties, it's a testament to Ron Colley's discipline on offense. The defense well rested now as well for Ron Colley. Chittard has an explosive passing game. Only had the football once in this second half. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left, first and 10 from Chittard's own 20. Van Bleet drops back to pass, looks, throws over the middle, has an open man, it's caught at the 30 to the 35, 40, 45, 50. Finally brought down from behind. Catch is made by Colin Guy, the junior. Catch for the Trojans, my apologies. And she started a great job. Of getting, they had receivers to the outside. He did a crossing route right across the middle. Ron Colley had that soft part of the defense there. Uh, and, and again, Van Fleet's not only got a strong arm, you can tell he understands the pass coverages and goes for the easy one right across the middle. First and 10 from midfield for the Trojans. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Hand off is to Kennett. He's got space to the, the 40, 35, has the first down and more. Well, this is why in modern football, I don't pay attention as much to time of possession. You emphasize it when you can, but if you have an explosive offense, and this drive isn't over by any means, but you can flip that in a dime if you're able to put together a quick drive and get back into this ball game. No question. It's a, it's a, a weapon that everyone yep. wishes they yep. had. Yep. Not everyone can do it. Two wide receivers to the right, one in the right slot, one to the left for Van Vliet. Has Kinnett to his right. Final play of this third quarter. Quick pass, caught at the 30. That will be where the play ends after a gain of five. So a quick hitter makes it second and five for Chittard and we come back. Final quarter in this arch rival matchup between number one in class 3A Chittard and number two in class 4A Ron Colley. The Royals lead 14 to seven heading into the final frame. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Ron Colley Rolls Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. This is The Ron Colley High School Alumni Association is proud to support our current Royals and their athletic endeavors. If you'd like more information on how you can better support your alma mater, contact Director of Alumni Services Aaron Hommel at ahommel at roncolley.org or by phone at 787-8277, extension 242.
And now Royals football on the Ron Colley Media Network. Welcome back to Bob Tully Field. Second and five for the Trojans from the Ron Colley 29-yard line. Jimmy Cook alongside Dan Bauer and Dan Lauk. Thanks so much for making time for us here on a Friday. Ron Colley leads 14-7 on this second and five. Hit off the oh. Kennedy's met immediately. Right out in front by the Royals. No gain on the play, maybe a gain of a yard. And Ron Colley right now, as I look down the sidelines, they've got an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman. They're all kind of working on cramps right now. Uh, so cramping is going to be kind of a story for Ron Colley. I, we don't have as good a viewpoint over to the sidelines of Chittard, but at least Ron Colley has some, some things we've got to keep an eye on. It'll be a gain of a yard, third and four from the Trojans' 28-yard line. Two wide receivers to the left, two to the right. Royals defense looking for another big stop. Well, Kyle's going to take a timeout right and now. And we might have a timeout. Dan is correct. We'll take one as well. Timeout by Ron Colley. 11.36 left to play in this final quarter. Ron Colley leads 14-7. to You're listening to Ron Colley Royals football on the Ron Colley Media Network. Today's logistics marketplace is an ever-changing landscape where you can make your mark through dedication and passion. At SPOT, these characteristics, along with drive and teamwork, form the basis for a rewarding, fast-paced career. Take it from our Ron Colley co-founder and our dynamic group of Royals alumni. They've never lost the entrepreneurial spirit that provides the foundation for our continued success. There's never been a time like this, and there has never been a partner like Spot. We're relentless. We are experts. We are accomplished. And like you, we will never lose our drive to deliver. Come find your spot at spotinc.com slash careers. Go Royals. This is Royals Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. Field, third and four for the Trojans from the Ron Colley 28-yard line. Ron Colley leads 14-7, 11.36 left to go in this fourth quarter. Van Vliet all alone in the gun. Two wide receivers to the left, three to the right. They go five wide here on this third and four. Van Vliet looks, blitz coming. He is going to be avoiding pressure to the 40. Runs, fires on the run near the sideline. Is it caught? Oh, he caught it. It is caught. And it's enough for the first down. Wow. Drew Van Vliet with a magic wand out of the pocket, able to roll right, find his man for the completion, and keep this drive alive for Chittard. And Great I, coverage defensively by Ron Collins. I was going to say, I couldn't see who was on the, on the corner there, but he had a chance to intercept yeah. that one. That was a very tight window. Uh, and so great catch by Chittard because that sh maybe should have been picked off, but – just, two, just a very athletic play. First from the Ron Cowley 22. Van Fleet hands it off to Kennett to the 20. Cuts back to the 15. That's where he's brought down a gain of five. And now the Trojans starting to balance their attack a little bit. You, both Dan's mentioned it. Wanting to get the passing game to open up running lanes. Ron Cowley trying to do the same thing on their end. Chittard, three wide receivers out there, second and two from the Ron Cowley, 14. Two to the left, one to the right. Hand off to Kennett, up the middle, one man to beat. He'll get by him and walk in wow. for a Trojans touchdown. No flags on the field. And Chittard, an extra point away from tying this one up with 10.43 to play in this fourth quarter. Really nice drive by Chittard. I mean, they did everything right. Had some passes, some runs. They really opened up their offense a little bit. And Ron Colley was on their heels the whole time there. Uh, to, you know, it looks like they'll tie this up here. Uh, we've got a ball game still. You expect nothing less here in this rivalry. Point after try. Good snap. Good hold. Kick is good. 10.43 left to play in this final quarter. Chittard has tied it. Ron Colley a chance to answer when we come back. It's 14 apiece. You're listening to Ron Colley Royals football on the Ron Colley Media Network. 
Marion University wants to know, what are you made of? At Marion University, our students are made of character and faith. Our students are service-minded and want to make a difference in the world. Our students possess the skills and intellect required of leaders. Come to Marion University, Indy's premier Catholic university, and let us help you find out what you're made of. You can apply for free today at marion.edu. While others focus on simply facilitating a transaction, Century 21 agents like Sarah Lux believe in the value of delivering extraordinary experiences by defying mediocrity and always giving you 121%. Find your new home or sell your current home with the best. Contact Sarah Lux at 502-6253 or online at listwithlux.com. That's Sarah Lux at listwithlux.com. List with L-U-X.com. This is Royals Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. 10.43 left to play in regulation. The rivalry living up to its top billing between Chittard and Ron Colley. Number two and number one in their classes, 4A, 3A respectively. Ron Colley set to receive this kickoff. Hoping their offense can let him bounce back in this final quarter after a tough drive from Chittard. That return is taken to the 10-yard line of the 15, out to the left side of the 20. 25 cut back around the 28-yard line. Solid return from Brandenburg. That's about where Ron Colley will set up shop, give it the 27-yard line. They have the ability to have these long-winded drives, Dan. We talked they about, do. though, time possession over the course of a game doesn't really matter as much if you have a high-powered offense, but with 10 and a half to go, have another seven, eight-minute drive, get a score out of it. You're sitting pretty for Coach Quintana. You're sitting pretty. And then, now the hard part of that is, you know, Ron Colley doesn't necessarily have the big play right. capability. So you've got a lot of downs that you have to have yep. no mistakes on. Correct. You know, because a mistake here or there can really set you back. So Ron Colley's got to, you know, just keep pounding it out and keep their head in the game uh, to make sure that they're smart with the way they play football. First and 10 from their own 28. Handoff is to Hanson up the middle. Keeps those legs moving forward. He'll gain about four. Call it second and six. 10-20 left to go in regulation. Roncalli and Chittard tied. Roncalli's won the last two meetings in a row. But Chittard leads the all-time series 37-25. They're deadlocked here on this field. 16 apiece. 16 wins apiece, rather. Your score is still 14-14. A wide receiver on either side of Moyers. Hanson to his right. Hand off to the left. Has a hold of the 40 and has the first down. It'd be good to move the chains. Hanson now up to 191 yards on the ground tonight on 35 carries. Two scores to his name. Five and a half yards per rush. They receive directions from the sideline to Moyers. Sweezy out far right side. Coglin down low to the left. Moyers in the gun. Hanson on his right hip. First and 10 from the 41. Takes the snap. Two step drop. Fires deep Whoa. downfield. Has Coglin incomplete. <sighs> Defender didn't really turn around, but the pass was possible for Coglin. Like it hit him in the chest. It'll yeah, down. another nice throw, and, and the defender was, did not turn around, and, and his helmet, you know, and Cogman couldn't get his hand up to get that second hand up there. You know, that would could have been called. I personally like the no call. Sure. Uh, I'm a defensive kind of guy, and you're running along with him, and you know, it's – but, again, I, I you know, Moyer's another nice throw. A wide receiver on either side, second and 10 from the Royals' own 41-yard line, 9.24 to go, tie game. Hanson, handoff up the middle, has the 45, close to the 50. They'll call it about two yards short of midfield, so three yards short of the line to gain. Third and three, we'll call it. That play is kind of starting to attack kind of outside the tackle area there. They've got uh, Swartz playing in kind of a tight end position, so he's – Clogging up the outside contain guy. Third and three from the Royals' own 48-yard line. Swayze to the top. Coglin down low. 
Moyers receives directions with 10 on the play clock. He's yet to get ready in the gun. Now he's set. Hanson on his left side. Man in motion is Elsner. Takes the snap. Hand off. Hanson. Full head of speed. Keeps turning and spins forward. I think he's going to be close. Initial mark looks short, but let's wait. That is going to be tight. See if they measure. Now they'll move the chains. Oh, wow. White Hat says move them on. First down, Ron Cali. Looked like the line judge on the far side gave him a better mark, had moved him past the line of scrimmage. They end up marking the ball inside of that, which made you kind of believe that it wasn't going to be a first down. But White Hat said, ah, we probably should have marked it a little ahead. We'll go ahead and give him the first down. So it'll be first and 10 for Ron Colley into Chittard territory now. Ball on the 49 of Chittard. Coglin up top. Sweezy down low. Moyers. Hand off to Hanson. He's tackled immediately, but carries the tackler for about two yards. Maybe only a yard. Let's see. Eight minutes now, and it is just a yard gain. Second and nine from the Trojans' 48-yard line. Ron Colley, as you would expect, being very deliberate on this drive. Going to their strengths, utilizing the big men up front. And their top-level running back in Hanson. Trojans show blitz, second and nine from the 48. High snap given to Brandenburg, who's out there. Hesitates initially, now tries to jump back outside, cuts inside near the Woo first down marker. Dancing all over the place for a gain of seven. And it'll be third and short. It made me a little nervous. Brandenburg hasn't shown the breakaway speed to stop, cut all the way back, but he did a great job. Uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of room out there. Cut flat back, which, you know, when you get a running back going flat, it's a good sign for the defense. But he did a good job cutting up the field to pick up, well, four or five yards to get us, uh, you know, third and short. 7-13 to play in regulation, all tied at 14. Third and three for Ron Cowley from the Trojans' 42-yard line. A wide receiver on either side. Brandenburg is the tailback next to Moyers. Takes the snap, handoff Brandenburg. He's nice got a first cut. down of 35 to the 30, dragging Trojans deep into Bishatar territory. Ben Brandenburg has been outstanding when called upon in relief this season. Enough to move the chains and then some. Give him a gain of 12. It's first and 10 from the 30-yard line of Bishatar. Yeah, Brandenburg did a great job. Saw the daylight and just went straight. Showed some speed going straight ahead, and that's what, what you like out of him. When that blocks are set, you take advantage of it in the Wildcat formation yep. now, Jimmy. Moyers to the bottom, Coglin to the right. Hanson with Brandenburg to his left. First and 10 from the 30. He'll keep it himself as Brandenburg in front of him. Makes one man miss on the left side of the oh. 25. <laughs> Finally brought it a bounce. Where did he step out? Right at the 25-yard line, so a gain of five. Wildcat having some resurgence in this Ron Cali offense. Well, and that was not the way they drew it up. They started a great job of playing it. They had guys that flowing up, coming up there, and, and Hanson looked like he was going to take a, a no gain to a, maybe a yard thing, and then he kicked it outside a little bit to get outside the initial rush of Chittard, found a little bit of space, and was able to pick, get a nice pickup. Second and four from the Chittard, 24, six and a half to play in regulation, tie ball game. Once again, this Wildcat look with Hanson, Brandenburg to his left, Moyers out wide to the far right. Brandenburg, high snap, and the edge pressure Whoops. is there by Chittard. Hanson still on his feet. Now he's got space outside before he's finally swallowed up, so it'll be about a loss of two on the play, but could have been disastrous even further at multiple times there. Hanson using his great vision to make it about third and medium instead of a massive loss. Yeah, that's a, a lot of work for a, a what, a four or five yard loss. Yeah. <laughs> but it could have been worse. You're right, Jimmy. Nailed it on the head. And that great, great athleticism, athleticism to yeah. keep it moving. So it'll but. be third and eight now for Ron Colley from the Trojans, 28. Moyer's back there at quarterback now. Sends Sweezy to the far right side. Coglin to the left. Hanson on his hip. Third and eight. Give us to Hanson. Up the middle. Has vision. Keep pushing forward, but he's going to be brought down from behind about four yards short of the first down. And now decision time for Ron Colley. At this point, given the distance, I say you go for it, Dan. Yeah, you're looking at about a 42-yard field goal from here, which college level, not a big deal. High school level, that that's is a, a lot. That's a lot. So, yeah, I think you have to go for it. So Getting maybe a little creative with the play. They, they pull the big boy out, uh, Swartz, and, and bring in a uh, – who did they bring in there? Their uh, uh, Elsner. They brought Elsner, back, yeah, Elsner yep. back in. 
Two wide receivers to the right. One wide receiver to the right, one to the left, rather. Fourth and six for the Ron Cali, 26. Moyers, two-step drop, looks, steps up, fires in the flat. It wide is open. caught by Elsner to the 20, 15, 10. Finally forced out of bounds at the five. What a play by Eric Moyers staying true. Beautiful touch pass to Elsner out in the flat. And the Royals are in business, first and goal with 4.41 left to play in this ballgame. And that's a great design play. Elsner's not a guy that you've put in a minute, you've seen him go in the pass rush. He's there to be a blocker and to, and to kick people out. You know, he stood on a block and then peeled off at the last minute, made him wide open, uh, forced that defensive person to either come up and get the quarterback or stay with Elsner. As soon as he steps to the quarterback, you got a wide open guy, you throw it up there. Elsner did a good job concentrating, catching. Everybody thinks that's an easy catch, but a lot of pressure there. You're looking at the lights a little bit, and he did a good job wrangling in and making sure he got that first down. So got another huddle by the officials here. Who knows what they're talking about now? Second Lord, pizza. Lord only knows uh, they didn't get enough anchovies were on the first one by mistake. They had <laughs> that's what it is. Regroup on that. I think it might be a penalty on the Trojans based on the clapping and the decline signals. Whatever it is, the ball's going to be on the three-yard line. They're going to pick up the flag. Okay, pick up the flag. So first and goal from the three for Ron Colley. 441 left. We're all tied at 14. Royals already on about a five-and-a-half-minute drive as it stands. Moyers in the gun. Sweezy to the left. Coghlan to the right. Hanson on the right side of Moyers. Twenty-five on the play clock. Moyers ball on the right hash sends a man in motion and Elsner snap handoff. Hanson oh, met immediately goodness. and a flag comes. They sent two Yikes. on the right side through that gap, and that's the hardest hit you'll probably see Hanson take all year. Let's see what the flag is on, though. That was immediate before the contact was made with Hanson. Right in the middle of the play um, of the offensive line there over the center. I'm not saying it was the center that did it, but I'm guessing it's a hold of some kind. Or it could be kind of a chop block if you got a guy and they're blocking down on it. I'm not sure. Well, they are going to move back. Going back 10, I'm guessing it's a hold. You are right. It is a hold on Ron Colley. So 4.37 left in this ball game, all tied at 14. That will bump it back to the 14. So first and goal for the 14 from Ron Colley. Sorry, first and goal from the 14 of Chittard. Ron Colley with it in the driver's seat to this point on this drive. Clock running with 4.30 to go in regulation. Two wide receivers to the left. None to the right. Moyers has Hanson to his left side. Sends a man in motion. It's Coglin. They fake the pitch pass. Give to Elsner instead. Makes make make that Hanson rather instead. Makes a man miss. Gets to the ten down to the five. And that's where he's brought down. So something they set up initially in the first half with that touch pass. They add an extra wrinkle to it. Well, Hansen yes. Makes a play. Another kind of creative play. You had actually two guys or three guys kind of cutting through there with Hanson in the middle. You know, so you don't know which guy's going to get a little bit, what we'll call a misdirection, in that it stops the defense from collapsing down on it. you got to respect that one of those guys might have it. You still give it to Hanson right at the middle. So the play looks a little different, but, it, and again, there's some other threats, w which forces the defense to at least honor those other threats. Second and goal from the seven. A wide receiver to the right and to the left. Moyers, handoff. Hanson trying to find the edge to the right side. Turns back in, keeps the legs churning. He's out of bounds at about the three, perhaps the two. Good power run out there on the edge. Where'd they mark it? Can you tell? I can't tell from this mark. The three, the two. Nope, well, the they put it at the two and they moved it back yep. one. So third and goal from the three. Again, this is where the drive... The goal to go drive started for Ron Colley prior to that penalty. Third and goal from the three. Moyers receives the play call. One wide receiver on either side of him. 
Hanson to his left. Third and goal. Handoff Hanson, and oh. he's tackled from behind. He had the edge, but great tackle in space did by Sam Feeney. Okay, and they, they, they marked they, it down. Thought it might have been a fumble late, but he was down first. So now fourth and goal, 3.15 to play. Do you take the points, Dan, or do you go for it? This is where the co I think you got to field goal kick it personally. Take the points. They will take the points, it appears, and bank on the leg of Levi Whistler and bank on your defense to hold this lead with under three minutes to play in regulation. Chittard defense answered their call. Whistler trying to answer his to put the Royals in front with 2.45 to play. Now, don't forget. A timeout taken by Ron Colley. Well, I was going to say Southport blocked a couple of these. Yeah. In the, so, you you know, I, hopefully they've had two weeks of practice and they're going to have a good blocking scheme up front. But you got to make sure we block because, uh, uh, you know, a, a blocked punt is a live ball or blocked field goal is a live ball. Big that field could, goal upcoming after this. Stay with us on the Ron Colley Media Network. A proud supporter of Ron Kelly High School, Indy Teledata provides IT solutions for businesses and organizations in central Indiana. For over 10 years, Steve Battiato and his team of professionals have provided comprehensive computing support, business telephone solutions, network infrastructure, and productivity suite integration. For a free evaluation of your technology needs, give Steve and his team a call at 317-231-5547 or visit us at IndyTeledata.com. This is Royals football on the Ron Colley Media Network. Welcome back to Bob Tully Field, 246 left to play. Royals field goal to go in front. About how far do you have this field 23 goal? 23-yard. 23-yarder for Whistler. So Levi Whistler lines up for the 23-yard field goal to put Ron Colley in front. Good snap. Good oh hold boy. kick is blocked. Blocked yeah, tackle, not tackle. returnable. Just in case. And in fact, it, it looked like <laughs> I don't know if it was if the hold looked good initially, if it was bad late, or if Whistler just had timing off on his routine to go up and kick it. It looked to me like timing was off because it looked like he hit the top of the ball for some reason. Yep. Um, I, but <clears throat> so the Royals come up empty. Ah. Shatard holds, and with 2:42 to play, all Shatard needs is a field goal to pull off the win here at Bob Tully Field. Roncalli defense looking for an answer. Still plenty of time. It'll be first and 10 from Chittard's own nine yard line. Royals defense made massive stops a week ago against Franklin Central. Ron Cowley needs them to answer the day here. Drive will start again at the Trojans own nine yard line. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left for Van Fleet. Kennett back there with him on the left side. Van Vliet takes the snap, two-step drop, pressure coming, quick pass is caught at the 10, to the 15, now the 20, before he's finally forced out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Jeff Waugh, the tight end on the reception. Clock will run with 2.30 to play in regulation. Roncalli, Chittard tied at 14 apiece. First and 10 from Chittard's own 28-yard line. Gain of 19 there by Waugh. Two wide receivers to the left, two to the right. Van Vliet, quick pass in the slant. Ooh. And it's incomplete, but a flag will fly from the back judge. Pass interference. Likely the call on Ron Colley. There was definitely a body bumper. I don't know if it was enough to warrant the flag. You say yes? It was right. definitely, right. yeah. He'd wrapped him. All right. Official threw the, for the way back right in the middle of the field with a, a rocket uh, coming at him, but he hit uh, Braden Lauk in the head with it. Tough. So the uh, flag didn't quite make it to the intended uh, yard line. But, uh, yeah, I think that was a, he had an arm, arm around him. I think it was a good call. And his uh, pass interference on Ron Colley. So that will move things forward to the 43 of Shatar with 2.16 to go. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. One in the slot as well for Bishop Chittard. Kennett back there for Van Fleet. Hanson showing blitz for Ron Colley. Handoff to Kennett. Trying to get the edge, nowhere to be found. He'll gain a two on the forward progress. A generous forward progress call. 
to make it second and eight for Chittard with two minutes to play in this ball game. Again, all tied at 14. Ron Colley missed a 23-yard field goal to put him in front just a few moments ago. Chittard, Chittard trying to end Ron Colley's two-game win streak. Van Vliet drops back to pass on second and eight, floats it out in the flat, and great tackle. Ball out. is out, and is it a fumble recovered by Ron Colley? It is. The Royals with a massive defensive play. Guess who? Judson Lowry answers the day. And the turnover forced Ron Colley back in business with 143 to play. Yeah, that was a fantastic hit coming up, uh, causing the ball to kind of come loose. I didn't see who picked it up, but uh, might have been uh, might have been Brayton Lock actually on that side of the field. I don't know that for sure, but uh, again, great play by uh, Judson to come up and just lay the wood down to make that ball come out. Ron Colley defense once again bails it out. Dan Lauk, your visual from down there. Big play made by the Royal defense. Yeah, fantastic hit and fantastic shoulder placement by Judson. I had a chance to talk to him right before the start of the second half and said, hey, you got to shake off that first half uh, touchdown completion. He said, I know, Coach, I already forgot about it. Kid stepped up and made a play there. Massive play and, and wise advice there by our former coach. A lot of football minds in this broadcast booth. Well, Rob Doyle was out really arguing that play. He thought maybe he didn't catch it. But yeah, it's tough. Uh, he, he couldn't see it it's from all the way spot. over there. He can't see it from that spot. First and 10 from Chittard's 43. Hand off to Hanson. Trying to find blockers to the outside. Cuts back inside of the 40. Keeps the legs churning to the 38-yard line. With 1.34 to go, Ron Colley... If I'm not mistaken, Dan, two timeouts I have unofficially for Ron Cowley. I believe they've used yes, one in I got half. two. Yep. That should be noted. Luke Hansen now at 45 carries. The school record per our statisticians by Marcus Nally set in November of 02 is 50. Just something to keep an eye on. Second and six. Handoff at the Hansen, but I think you have a false start by Ron Cowley. The line moved early. I was just looking at our stat, guys. It does look like Laurie uh, was the. Uh... I think he caused it and recovered the fumble, at least according to our stat guys. So I was not sure who picked it up. Well, Ron Colley, not <laughs> the result you wanted. They've had a couple of strong drives that were massively hampered by penalties in this ball game. We'll get that official number for you. In for penalty game. yards. Yep. 68 yards uh, in penalties on nine penalties for Ron Colley. So it's second and 11 now from just past midfield with 1.12 to go. Royals still have two timeouts to operate with. We're tied at 14. A wide receiver on either side of Moyers. Hanson to his left. Takes the snap. Two-step drop. Pressure coming. Quick pass. is caught by Tunney at the 40 to the 35. Forced out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Royals get the first down. Nullify that penalty yardage. And they're in business with less than a minute to go. Ball on the 30-yard line. Royals let the clock stop with the chains moving, and now it rolls with 55 seconds to play in regulation. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right, first and 10 from the Trojan 30. Hand off Hanson, out the middle of the 25. Keeps the legs turning to the 20 on the second effort, and that'll be enough to move the chains. So the clock will stop with 47 seconds left to play in regulation. Chittard's got Royals somebody hurt, so well. that takes the pressure off of getting up to the line yep. of scrimmage quickly. A good call on your part. We will take a break as well with the injury. 47 seconds left, Ron Colley and Chittard tied at 14. Royals driving on the Ron Colley Media Network. Century 21 agents like Sarah Lux believe in the value of delivering extraordinary experiences by defying mediocrity and always giving you 121%. Find your new home or sell your current home with the best. Contact Sarah Lux at 502-6253 or online at listwithlux.com. That's Sarah Lux at listwithlux.com. List with L-U-X.com. You're listening to Royals Football on the Ron Colley Media Network. being helped off to much applause from the Ron Colley and Trojans faithfuls in attendance. That's Scott Semler, the junior 
linebacker being helped off with a little bit of assistance as he gets off gingerly. Hope he's all right. As we get back to live action, 47 seconds left. Clock stops, stopped because of that injury. So first and 10 now from the Trojans, 19. Two wide receivers to the right side, one to the left for Moyers to operate with. Hanson to his right side. Moyers takes the snap, gives to Hanson, up the middle, keeps the legs moving and falls forward for a gain of about four and likely see a timeout from Ron Colley here. And they're not going to no, use it. Clock's still right running. Now. 30 seconds left to play and counting. Royals hurry back to the line. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Moyers takes the snap, drops back, looks, steps up in the pocket. He's going to take ah. off and run. And is tackled Time from behind, night. close to the first down yardage. And now Ron Colley will use the timeout yep. with 15 seconds left, 14 seconds left officially to play in this ball game. <laughs> Moyers didn't like the options in front of him, decided to tuck it and run, Dan, and able to get a nice four-yard gain for Ron Colley, but a lot of time came off the clock. It did, and you got, you know, now you got to kind of, you got you got 14 seconds, you've got a one timeout left. You've got a kicking unit that didn't look too good last time, so you would like to think you want to keep that ball kind of in the middle, run, run it, probably keep it in the middle to give your kicker a chance to, to win the game. But do you want to count on that kicking unit that is not feeling very good about itself right now? Or do you, and you, do you make some, you know, I think you go to the air. You have to go to the air to give yourself a chance to have a couple plays if you can get the ball out quickly. I would, I'd be okay. <clears throat> I, Whistler has the leg. And no that question. one wasn't as much special teams issues. I much, I think, just a timing issue. I'd like a quick short throw potentially or a quick run. Get you a couple yardage. Let Hanson try to get a touchdown out of it. If he doesn't, line up for a kick and trust okay. Whistler one last time. I like it. Take the passing part out of it. I'd give it to Hanson. I'd let Hanson make the decision and go from there just because of Well, and Hanson can score from field. this correct, distance. Correct. So yes. you have a good blocking yes. scheme that, you yes. know, that, that's. Third and three. From the Trojans, 12, 14 seconds to play, all tied up. Moyers will drop back to pass. Looks, fires, over the middle, has a man. Incomplete. Whew, double With eight covered. seconds to go. Three white shirts in the area. And now the Royals are going to attempt the field goal. Levi Whistler getting an opportunity at redemption with eight seconds to go. Should Tard try to ice him? Uh, that's what I was wondering. Based on the on walk-in on the sideline, I don't think so. But 15 seconds are on the play clock as it stands. Royals have a man running off late. Looks like it's going to be another 23-yard field goal here. So Levi Same distance. Whistler. Levi Whistler, 23 yards for the game. There's and the Chittard ice. is going to pull out an ice opportunity. I'm not sure that's the best play right now. I mean, right, you know, the, the kicking team's kind of struggling. You're trying Blake to hurry Clark up, get there. Down, you're going to have to yes. rush a little bit. I think, you yeah. you know, icing them might not be the best call here. We'll see, obviously. But, and, and you know, maybe you, you put in some kind of block scheme, uh, you know, on your kicking team. But Whistler one for two on field goals on the year. Six of, make that eight of ten. Came in six of nine. Eight of ten on point after tries. As Dan mentioned, this about a 23-yard attempt for the senior. <laughs> and he's out there. You got both teams in huddles on the sidelines, and Whistler's out there kind of on an island out there by himself, which I guess that's how kickers are. They kind of want to be in, the, in their own head for a second. Well, the icing is done. Whistler's opportunity to add a chapter of his own accord to this historic rivalry. A 23-yard kick with eight seconds to go to give Ron Colley the lead. Good snap, good hold. Kick Boom. is right down Broadway. Got Levi it. Levi Whistler from 23 yards out with four seconds to go. Puts the Royals in front, 17 to 14. Ice water in the seniors veins. What great redemption after that last kick for him. You know, a real nice snap, good hold, 
and he just put a big old leg into it. So real nice job by the whole team to make sure they blocked it appropriately. And at least for now, looks like they got you know that that chance to win this game with a, a kickoff and a tackle. Some chants of Levi from the white out student section, a capacity crowd in attendance for Ron Colley, but still four seconds left. Got to kick this one away, but given what, I guess you're picking your poison how you want to do it. If you want to squib it, however you want to operate with it. Levi's got the leg to give you a touchback. He's got the leg to give you a squib. Whatever you want to do, where's your philosophy here? I don't want to give it to their quarterback. I think you squib it yep. and try to get it to one of the up backs that's not real fast. Uh, and then just have good coverage, good disciplined coverage. Seven plays, 31 yards, a minute 39, capped off by the 28-yard field goal for Levi Whistler. 28, really? That's what RHS Stats and Info says. Yeah, they're right. I defer I, I, to you because I, I'm not well, so and I, yeah, so I didn't trust myself. So I'm it was not, a I'm longer not kick. You You're right. Means. It was a, yeah. It was uh, that's my fault. Hey. Ten yards further back than I thought it was. An extra five in the paper. Or uh, five, yeah, five. Uh, yeah, was like, hmm. I screwed that one up, Jimmy. Man. <laughs> Whistler set to kick it away with four seconds to go. Ron Cowley leads 17 to four. Runs up and it is a high end. Taken with three seconds, two seconds, one to the 25, 30, trying to bounce it outside, a lateral Going from behind. Back. He's brought down, loses the ball, it's a fumble. Royals dive on it, recover it, and that's the ball game. The Eric Quintana era is 3-0, and Coach Quintana defeats his old mentor and head coach in Rob Doyle. Ron Colley, the second ranked team in 4A, knocks off the top team in class 3A. The Bishop Chittard Trojans, 17 to 14, to improve to 3 and 0 on this great season. I'm just watching Coach Quintana over there. He he sprinted over to the other sidelines there and getting big hugs from most of the coaches on that side. I'm not sure Rob Doyle uh, felt the same, but. It's well, good to see him getting love from his, his, his past team. We're going to have plenty of time to talk about this post game, but for now, a victorious Royals head coach, Eric Quintana, as Coach Lauk gathers him towards our press box for a post game conversation. He's now 3 0 and a big win over an arch rival. Let's send it down to Dan Lauk with the head coach. Eric Quintana. Yeah, thanks, Jimmy. He's here getting the students pumped up. Coach, obviously a huge win against a team you're very familiar with. How does it feel? Yeah, it was great. Uh, it was a good hard fought. We know that, I mean, it always comes down this week. I mean, on paper, we had the better team, but those guys came out. They played hard, um, and, and kudos to our guys. Our guys stayed the course. We do what we do and ran the ball and won the game, so that was good. Yeah, fantastic. Talk a little bit about your kicker and the kicking game in general. You know, obviously a, a little mishandled snap on the previous attempt, yeah. but to come back and boot it straight through with confidence. Talk a little bit about Levi and what he brings to the team. Yeah, Levi's fantastic. You know, the, 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 the most impressive thing about him is that he plays linebacker too during the week. So the kid's a tough kid. He doesn't get rattled. We had a little mishap with the hold, um, but he, he, I mean, kudos. He made, I, I, it's awesome. He did a great job. Congratulations, Coach. We'll see you next week in Columbus. Back to you, Jimmy. Thank you, Dan Lauk, and tip of the cap to Royals head coach Eric Quintana. You knew this game meant a lot to him going up against his former head coach as an offensive coordinator since Rob Doyle started there for five seasons with him. Season number six, he departs for the Ron Colley job. Big matchup, big rivalry win. He knows both sides of this, but you saw him walk in the huddle right there and cheers all around from his men. A hard-fought victory on their end over Chittard tonight. We're going to step aside. We come back. It's time for our Indy Teledata post-game show. Ron Colley wins it 17-14 over Bish Chittard. Stay with us. Post-game show is up next on the Ron Colley Media Network. 
The Ron Colley High School Alumni Association is proud to support our current Royals and their athletic endeavors. If you'd like more information on how you can better support your alma mater, contact Director of Alumni Services Aaron Hommel at ahommel at roncolley.org or by phone at 787-8277, extension 242. While others focus on simply facilitating a transaction, Century 21 agents like Sarah Lux believe in the value of delivering extraordinary experiences by defying mediocrity and always giving you 121%. Find your new home or sell your current home with the best. Contact Sarah Lux at 502-6253 or online at listwithlux.com. That's Sarah Lux at listwithlux.com. List with L-U-X.com. A proud supporter of Ron Colley High School, Indy Teladata provides IT solutions for businesses and organizations in central Indiana. For over 10 years, Steve Battiato and his team of professionals have provided comprehensive computing support, business telephone solutions, network infrastructure, and productivity suite integration. For a free evaluation of your technology needs, give Steve and his team a call at 317-231-5547 or visit us at IndyTeladata.com. It's time for the Indy Teledata Post Game Show on the Ron Colley Media Network. Now here's Dan Bauer and the voice of the Royals, Jimmy Cook. Welcome back to Bob Tully Field. You can ring the bell in the chapel as many times as you want and save one for the kicker, Levi Whistler. His 28-yard field goal puts Ron Colley in front for good with four seconds left and no trickerations or laterals would save Chittard's night as Ron Colley victorious over their arch rivals, Bishop Chittard, 17 to 14. An Indy Teledata postgame show is on alongside Dan Bauer and Dan Lauk. I am Jimmy Cook. Guys, a lot to unpack. Start first with the second half. You talked about adjustments on both sides. Dan, I'll start with you because I asked you what you'd like to see differently from Chittard. They made key adjustments at times to really make a game out of this. Not that it wasn't already, but put pressure on Ron Colley and if not for it was tough to see from our vantage point it's a game of inches and at this level you go with the call on the field and you roll with it but coach Doyle not happy with the fumble that was called that turned the tide to give Ron Colley this opportunity wild second half offensively for Shatari that ultimately ends with a key turnover and Ron Colley coming out here as winners yes uh Rob Doyle won't get back home before he finds that play on tape somewhere and watches it to see if if either the receiver did not have it long enough, or if it was if he was down before it was ruled a fumble, uh, there's going to be some questions on that, and, and that obviously turns the the whole whole tide there, uh, you know. But uh, another classic Ron Colley Shatard football game, uh, you know. And, and you look through the years, there's there's a whole bunch of you know 14 to 17 type scores that this rivalry just just brings out. The, the defensive teams play really well. It's a struggle to get offensive points because, uh, you know, A, these kids care. They, they know how to play football. Uh, and these coaches are out for blood. Uh, I mean, they want to win this game. And you saw the emotion by Coach Quintana. I mean, you know, you heard it in the interview. Nice job, Dan, with that interview. But then also, I mean, the fact that he ran across the field uh, to try to handshake and hug all these past friends. And then after that, uh, he, he – the, the, the uh, principal came out, shook his hand. There was about eight Ron Colley people that came out of nowhere to shake his hand, and, and you could see he was bubbling with joy yep. to get this victory. And you saw it, That's a, and I'm glad you mentioned that. I know you mentioned it when it happened, but for Coach Quintana, and I mean, it, it's a second nature thing, and I'm sure as a coach to him it's not a big deal. He's like, oh, it's just the right thing to do. But you see great coaches that – put things deeper than just the wins and losses to go out there as a gesture. First thing he wants to do is run the other sideline because of the respect that he has for Coach Doyle and company. It's a great mm -hmm. point by you and just a just a solid character nod there by Coach Quintana. No question. Dan, on the other side, this time to Dan Lauk as he joins us here on the Indy Teledata postgame show. Very easy for Levi Whistler and that special teams unit. They've had a couple hiccups here and there. Coach Quintana talks about how special teams in his wheelhouse and, and Coach Frykowski and company, the hard work they do each and every week, they pride themselves on it. For the most part tonight, at least with blocking, it's gotten better game over game. They've cleaned it up to a point, but bobbled snap, easy for confidence to be down. Not the case here for this unit. 
Yeah, and that, being so close to that play, that thing was shot out of a cannon. I mean, uh, you know, I, the previous kick I know is, is still in Levi's head. And for a kid like that to go back out there and say, I'm not even going to leave this one to doubt. I'm just going to go out there and boot it as hard as I can. And I got to give a shout out to the long snapper as well, number 33. Uh, he was on the sidelines practicing before that kick, two snaps straight in the dirt. And for him to, to shake <laughs> that really. off, to shake that off and get out there and execute is, is really a testament to his character. So great job all around. That's and and I, as a former defensive coordinator, the touchbacks. Levi Whistler being able to put the ball in the end zone on kickoffs is a weapon. Yep. It's a weapon. So With a three-step, step, I mean, he doesn't yeah. get lined up seven yards down and come up and run. Yeah, it's I a think field goal kick that goes the distance. Exactly. Coach Quintana said he's a linebacker, too. That's that strength, he right, is, to yeah. be able to put it Cole in the Cole Kessler zone. is yeah. the uh, number yes, 33. Yes, Cole Kessler, the, the absolutely. On that. And he's a new snapper, so the, he's not done this in a varsity game before. So, yeah, hats off to him. And to your point regarding the kicking game, I know you heard it down on the field, but that's what Dan and I talked about in the lead-up with four seconds to go of how you kick it because you have options with with uh, Levi's leg. You can either send it deep for a touchback if you want to play defense that way. You could squib it if you want to, or he could take just a little bit off it, which is what they did, leave it at the 10, and just hope special teams. And this group is so good. Again, Coach Frankowski and, and company that – set up this special teams unit excellent coverage as you saw throughout the night and that was it there's nothing doing there yeah really like the the plan there to just put the ball in the returner's hands and have your your kickoff team who's been so good rallying to rallying to the ball to finish the game off and they did we're going to take a quick break when we come back we'll hand out our post game awards we will also take you through final numbers Last thoughts in another historic chapter of this Ron Colley rivalry. And take a look back at, Dan mentioned how close these games have been. It's been a while since you've had a game come down to three points or less to end a ball game. Uh, one of them down to the wire, and we'll talk about it, at one that kind of rips at my heart back when I was here, Ron Colley. Uh, Chittard, Ron Colley on the losing end of things here at Bob Tully Field back then. We'll look back briefly at this history, this historic rivalry, hand out post-game awards, final stats, and more. Look ahead as well next week against Columbus North. Royals win it 17-14 over top-ranked in Class 3A Chittard. Back in a moment to wrap things up on the Ron Colley Media Network. Never Bob Tully Field, 
Jimmy Cook alongside Dan Bauer and Dan Laubeck. Ron Colley victorious. 17 to 14, the final on the back of a 28 yard field goal by Levi Whistler with four seconds to play in regulation. Enough to get the victory for the Royals. Time now on our Indy Teledata post game show to hand out player of the game honors. But first, plenty of roses to hand out tonight from performances all around. Dan, I'll. I'll and Bauer, I will refer to you on that. Defer I'll start it out and, yeah, talk about a some, couple, I yep. think, some really, you know, key uh, things that happened in this game. So, so, some Steve Flowers uh, roses to hand out. Oh, yeah, nice. Sponsorship. sponsorship. I go. love it. There you go. Nicely done. So, you know, Luke Hansen. yeah, I know he gets all kinds of a credit. And there's the big boys in front yep. of him and, all. you know, yada, 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 yada. 47 carries. That is a ton of carries. Yep. You are – yeah. Three away from it, tying a school record. It reminds me of the old uh, AT days where your offense was handed to Anthony Thompson and let him run it for 47 times, and you get stronger at the end of the game. Hanson kept getting stronger, fighting uh, cramps the whole game uh, and, and end up with 233 yards and two touchdowns. Our two touchdowns, by the way, you know, another fantastic performance by him. It, it is so easy, and I'm glad you gave him the shout-out there. It's so easy with how these games are going to go, particularly if they're down to the wire like this to for a second forget about the impact that Hanson has on yes. these games and the offensive yes. line has on the yes. games. Yes, no question. Yep. Second of all, Ben Brandenburg. I mentioned that they, they, you've got you know the cramps going on. You, your, your star running back, you know, he's going to end up with 233 yards. Second week in a row that he's been called upon in that. Yes, he steps up. Seven Hanson. carries for 48 yards. Those are important 48 yards when you look at when he was getting those those, those touches. Uh, so great job by Ben coming in. Both those guys play a little defense too. Uh, ben a lot of uh, defense. Uh, Hanson a little bit of defense. Uh, the other one that I think you really got to point out, Eric Moyers. I think he grew a lot today. I think, you know, you've got a young quarterback that you're hoping by the end of the season he's your, really your guy. Today, 9 for 15, not real impressive. Uh, 69 yards, again, not something that you, you put in the paper and look how many yards, but they were important catches. Charlie's catch down at, at the bottom to get that ball Perfect up to the end zone. Pass. Perfect touch pass. He had a couple nice passes that got either knocked away or just didn't get yeah, caught. That was the thing. It, confidence throws on those. Confident throws, yes. That. They, were, they were all confident growth throws that – probably could have been made by the receivers. Yes. They weren't. He, now, he, had, a, he had an interception, too, so not a perfect game yet. No, no. But I think he really, even though the Massive stats don't forward. show it, you add a couple of those plays where they catch some of those balls that should have been caught, his stats are a lot more impressive. But I'm going to hand it over to Dan to give the actual player of the game award. Yeah, I mean, ice in his veins. I think we got to give it to him, Levi Whistler, uh, and really the whole kicking team in general, uh, to be able to put the game away and arguably the biggest game on the schedule with thousands of people watching. You just botched one earlier in the game. I mean, that's crucial, and it's, it's really huge for the kid and a huge confidence boost for him for the rest of the year. And then again, can't reiterate how much of a weapon it is to put the ball in the back of the end zone for touchbacks. It starts your defense, of, uh, defense out in a great position for every drive. And, and I think the key is, is Coach's comment, let's face it, he's a linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> you got to so, give it to the linebacker. Absolutely. Yeah, he's a, he's a defensive too. guy yeah, yes. that happens to play special teams. Yeah. Yes. We don't like to give it to kickers, no. but in this case we will because he's a linebacker. <laughs> and he won the game. Absolutely. <laughs> I Look, I, I don't know how to not place my card on the deck, and, and but this is a new sheriff in town. I'm more than willing to give it to a kicker if it comes down to it. I mean, I, I If he wins the game, we're going to give it to I mean, him. Yes, won. I agree, so, yeah. But, but And the I, other thing, and I, I forget about this all the time, and I, I do because you get in the moment of a game and – you guys have been around it more, so maybe you don't. But these are high school kids, and yeah. it's very easy to kind of get lost in your own mental faculties and be no down question. for a second after what happened to Whistler earlier, yeah. just a drive or two ago. Yeah, it speaks larger to the ice in his veins and his his presence of mind. He was out there by himself, like I said, Dan, like kickers he like was. to do, just in his routine, yep. staying poised despite an ice attempt by Shatard. Answers the call, redeems himself. Tip of the cap to him. And and I am very hard on kickers, and it, it's unfair. I'm 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 admitting it right now. Oh, I, I am, and I, I will tell you. I won't, I won't. I won't let you be on this island. I am as well. I will tell you that if you know if we took all of our listeners and said come out without any rush, without anything, put the ball on the the, oh. the 25 yard line, go, go there, there would be a very very small number yeah. that would be yeah. able to kick it. Yep. It is a very difficult um, right. Yeah. So we we did this coaching thing a long time ago, it was the CYO thing. There's all these coaches that all these guys played. You know, most of them played college football. Uh, all of them played high school football. We're out in the Colts facility, and they do a kicking competition. And the guy that ended up 
one of the few guys that was able to even kick it into the in between the uprights was oh by the way Ball State's old kicker who's now coaching in the system and you're like well that ain't fair but it was unbelievable all these athletes that were stepping up and making it look like uh, they were cheerleaders I mean because they had no athletic talent to kick that ball well including and, myself and we're, 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 <laughs> we're jumping all over the place with analogies now but I was living in Chicago at the time and when Cody Parkey had the double doink for the Bears. I mean, Chicago is a tortured franchise as it is. Yes. But a well, local bar had Don't tell fans Walter Payton. to kick it. Yeah, well, <laughs> my lifetime, they're, yes. they're, they're, a, they're a tortured franchise. But a local bar had fans trying to come out. Nobody can do it. I mean, it just is. Yeah. It is its unique skill trait. It is, yes, it is. Yeah, and if you go back and look at all the games, Roncalli, Shatar, they're all close, right? And I would bet you if you, you take a look at the close ones, What's it come down to? Probably special teams. I mean, even tonight, they had different ways of doing it, but Ron Colley's offense was able to move the ball. Chittard's offense was able to move the ball. You know, it's a it's a dead heat. What's it come down yeah. to? A kid hitting the kick at the end. And, and then the unfortunate part, if you go up to the next levels, kicking is being taken out of the game. With the fair catches and all this kind of stuff, where and, and, and these kickers are so good, they just blow it all through the end zone, and, and the kicking is taken out of the game. At high school, it is still very much a part of the game. And, and to your point, it's, it can be a very big game in the possession and, and where possessions start. The, the better your special teams are, the better your team is generally going to be because of how it pins the other team into, into, into difficult situations. Absolutely, yep. Well, our post-game award and the post-game show as a whole is brought to you by Indiana Members Credit Union. Indiana Members Credit Union is a proud sponsor of the Ron Colley Royals. Did you know you can get a Ron Colley-themed debit card that supports the school? Visit your local IMCU branch for more information on how you can support the Royals on the purchases you're already making. Thank you, Indiana Members Credit Union. Uh, final thoughts on tonight's game. But first, a quick trip down memory lane. Dan mentioned how close these games usually are, and he's correct. Most of the time, they're often one-score games. A couple anomalies the last couple of years, some blowouts on either side. But the last time there was a margin of three points or fewer, you got to go back to my senior year, August 31st of 2012. Ron Colley falls in double overtime, 28-25. to I swear forward progress should have been called. I think it was a run up the right side. I think Ron Cowley thought they had it. One of my buddies was a lineman, and he's, like, going off the field. Like, it, it, they did not call forward didn't progress, call it. and they right. pushed the pile into the end zone. I'm going to believe you because I can't remember past yesterday. I, I, that's but the only, I, don't, I can't remember <laughs> I watched a lot the game, of Ron but... games, but I, I do remember that one. Last <laughs> yes. time playing Chittard as a senior, that was not uh, a sad way to have things end. Other side of the script tonight, three-point win for Ron Colley. Uh, final thoughts, putting a bow on this one is the Coach Quintana era, defeating his old protege now, or his old mentor, rather, now 3-0 and on the year. Big game against uh, – headed to Columbus North next week. Well, and an old saying in football is a win's a win's a win's a win. Yep. Uh, you know, and, and this is a win. Uh, it's against your arch rival. Uh, you know, you've got to really kind of pull some strings. We, I saw some nice uh, – different sets that Ron Colley kind of pulled out of their hat. Obviously, they've been working on those. You don't pull those out of nowhere. You work on them. You're ready to use them if necessary, and they, I think they had to use those today. You saw the Wildcat. I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of the Wildcat still, but uh, it worked in, in, a, in, a, in a situation that they used it to get that, that important first down and then set up that touchdown. And, uh, you know, again, this is this is a game you're happy to get the win for the coach more than anything and, and to stay. Celebrate because it is Chittard. It's a huge win. It's really tough to beat your north side rival. Lots to clean up, and then you're going down south next week to Columbus North, which last time we were down there was a barn burner. Uh, they're going to be a tough opponent, a 6A opponent. Uh, it should be a dogfight, so you got to recover from the big win over your rival, reset, rethink. Tomorrow you move on to Columbus North. And, and Columbus North does not like to lose to Ron Colley. Uh, you know, when we were down there last time, they thought they had that game won, and Ron Colley pulled it out, and they were angry, <laughs> angry about it. Uh, you know, now last year's game uh, was a little bit more lopsided, 42 to 12, I think. Uh, you know, but uh, again, it, it was it's a, it's a rivalry that they do not want to lose. And um, I believe that did they lose the East in the first game of the year? Maybe that's typically the opener. I don't. I, I think they lost I that game. I, I, so, but, but so they're already a little bit mad to begin with. Yeah. So uh, it, it'll be a, a tough challenge. And, and honestly, as you look forward. You know, you, you you got you circle Louisville Mail on the team coming up. And you're like, oh man, that's going to be a tough one. Elder's going to be still mad. They were mad about last year, Jimmy. You remember that game? Uh, and then East Central. I mean, the, the, this schedule kind of just keeps getting more and more brutal. Uh, Garen Catholic's undefeated right now, depending on what they did tonight. Uh, you know, and then uh, Burbuff has taken a couple on the chin, I think. But uh, again, they always come with a, with a strong. And you got to go to Burbuff. So 
each week's going to get tougher and tougher, and Ron Kelly definitely has yep. to figure some stuff out uh, before those weeks come up. We've talked about it throughout the season. That schedule continues to get more challenging and more challenging and more challenging, progressively so. Another challenge next week against Columbus North. And additionally on that, I'll let you make the call, maybe not to the coaching staff, but some of the fine folks around Elder. Maybe they can bring us some of that barbecue up here. Oh, wouldn't uh, that be that great? Be great. I don't know if you can Oh, yes. That'd be, that'd be cool. Very special. we gotta got to have Dan – uh, try that as well, as that was some spectacular stuff. But not as sweet as a victory over Bishop Chittard, which is what happens tonight at Bob Tully Field. Ron Colley victorious tonight, 17-14. to 14. Our executive directors of the Ron Colley Media Network, Aaron Hommel and Therese Carson, video director, doing a wonderful job with his crew, his student-run crew, the great A.J. Ablog. For my partner, Dan Lauk and Dan Bauer, I'm Jimmy Cook. One final note next week. I apologize to Ron Colley Faithful, but I will be out of the booth next week. Eddie Garrison, good buddy of mine, a UND grad, comes from that Greg Rakestraw tree of broadcasting, a Greg Rakestraw alumni base there at, uh, at UND. I uh, had a call tonight on the fan for Lawrence North, Lawrence Central. He will be in the booth with Dan Bauer next week. That's a 7 o'clock start time at Columbus North. You're going to want to be here on the Ron Colley Media Network to enjoy that one. Again, for Dan Lauk and Dan Bauer, I'm Jimmy Cook. Our final from Dob Tully Field. Ring the bell in the chapel. Ron Colley knocks off Chittard 17-14 on a 28-yard field goal from Levi Whistler. And until we talk to you next time, so long.